And we welcome you to Connell Field, campus of Macon Middle School, getting set for some non-conference baseball tonight. It's the North Buncombe Blackhawks at the Franklin Panthers on a Monday night of baseball. Glad that you're with us. George Young alongside Ryan Haley. As you see, Malachi Hayes making his final warm-up tosses, and we're about to get this one underway about oh, 40 minutes after the slated time of 7 o'clock. JV game went a little long tonight, and hey, it's spring break, and so they said, let's play until we get to the sixth inning of the JV games. It's, you don't have to worry about going to bed early and getting up early tomorrow morning. These two teams uh, used to be in the same conference about 14 years ago or so. The old Mountain Athletic Conference, where the Panthers completed in that conference, and have not uh, competed consistently in a while. But the North Buckham Blackhawks come into tonight's game at four and six overall, and one and two in the split 3A, 4A Mountain Athletic Conference. The Panthers come in at two and seven. Run through the lineups for both teams as we go along. It's North Buckham Blackhawks. The visiting team that will bat first, and Reagan Smith, the shortstop, will settle in to face Malachi Hayes. We'll give you a quick trip around the infield for the Panthers. Anderson Terrell over at third, Ian Knapp at short, William Rowers at second, Jackson Hersey over at first, and behind home plate tonight is Jaden Rogers. And as, as I mentioned, Malachi Hayes is your pitcher tonight. Attic Sutton out and left for the Panthers. Damian Bowles in center, Reed Raby is out and right and Smith is just about ready for the opening pitch from Malachi Hayes. And we are underway as that is a strike right down the middle. Brian Haley joins me up here in the booth tonight as uh, we've been up here for a while waiting for this one to get underway and uh, glad that we have finally got this one. Some spring break baseball here for you. As the Panthers, we mentioned a couple of times in the past couple of broadcasts, uh, struggling uh, to get some hits and to get some quality pitch, uh, pitching in. And this week uh, with spring break and a couple of teams in North Buncombe and Smoky Mountain got an opportunity this week to get back on track. Yeah, we do. Uh, one of the big things that's happening right now is, you know, we have Malachi. He's, do he's doing very, very well off the mound, throwing, throwing hard. Uh, getting a lot of strikeouts, you know, keeping the walks down. Now you have Josiah Hersey, who is working his way back. He looked good his last time out, so things are starting to look up for us. So it's Malachi ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. Now time going to be called at home plate as Reagan Smith steps out briefly. We'll step back in. Awaits the one-two offering from Hayes. Popped up. Down the first baseline, Hersey will make the play for out number one. And those are a lot of things that we are seeing, you know, you know, as far as, you know, up here in the booth and, and also in the field. You know, Malachi throws strikes, and one thing that pitchers need to do is always contact or attack the zone, attack bats. You'll get outs and you get strikeouts, and the, and the game goes by fast. I'm to bring to the plate Brady Ray, the third baseman for the Blackhawks. Hayes, it was a fastball right down the middle. Looked like Ray wanted to square around and bunt at it. Take strike one. Very good fastball again by Malachi. Very very compact pitcher, uh, pretty explosive on his backside. He's doing a really good job. V very impressed with him so far this season. Here's the 0-1. Pops the middle a little bit low. Oof. He was it up at a ball and a strike. And you've been hear, hearing me the last couple of broadcasts. You know, your pitcher's <laughs> supposed to work the ball down in the zone, and he's doing that, and we're not getting the calls. The 1-1. One, one. Oh, and inside, two balls at a strike. North Buncombe, as I mentioned at the top, comes in at four and six and one and two in the conference. They played a pretty tough schedule. In fact, they've played some of the similar teams as the Panthers. North Henderson a couple of times lost to Tuscola. First game of the season back on February 27th as that one is high for ball three. And has lost the past two games to T.C. Robertson for a team that always has a fantastic baseball uh, team, baseball program in general. 3-1, hit in the air, left field. Out of our blonde spot, 
And looks like it'll be caught. Attic Sutton will camp under it for out number two. That was a good job battling from behind the count from two and one. Again, just hacking the zone, trying to get – put the ball in play and get a pop-up and get a ground out, get our defense going pretty quick. And you're talking about the scheduling. You know, you got teams like Anka and North Buncombe, you know, who play like TC and West and West Henderson, yeah. if you think about that. Three yeah, and four and, state champions. Yeah, and uh, North has also played West Henderson. That one's hit in the air, left field. Sutton backpedaling. Got to put on the brakes at about the warning track, and he'll make the play for the final out. So, one, two, three, go the North Buncombe Blackhawks in the top half of the first inning. We are scoreless as we head to the home half here at McConnell Field. Stay with us. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the first inning here at Lincoln Middle School, McConnell Field. You see Cameron Keenan make it his final warm-up tosses for the North Buncombe Blackhawks. He'll be on the bump for Coach Charlie Harrison. Behind the plate, it's Davis Franklin. Over at third, Brady Ray at short is Regan Smith. Zach Kirkendall is at second base, and Thomas Kirkpatrick over at first. In the right, in the uh, outfield, and left, Gray Reedy. In center, it's Dylan Silvers and Tyson Tessner will be out in right. Panthers battery is Jaden Rogers, who will lead it off. Ian Nepp bats second. Malachi Hayes bats third. Jackson Hersey batting the cleanup spot. Will Rowers in the five hole, batting sixth. It's Reed Raby, Attic Sutton bat seventh. Matt Anderson Terrell will bat in the eight hole. And then in the nine slot, it is Damian Bowles. Stepping to the plate, Jaden Rogers. The first pitch is a little bit low for ball one. George, I've been asked about, you know, why is Coach Greenwood putting Jaden Rogers in the leadoff spot? You know, he's not like overly fast or whatnot, but one of the things he does do is get on base. That one pops away from the catcher, Davis Franklin. He's been a big bright spot for, you know, for him in the lineup for the fact that, you know, he'll draw walks, he puts the ball in play, he's, get, he's getting base hits. And right now, you know, needing base runners as bad as we do, why not have your leadoff guy, no matter his speed-wise, to get on base. 2-0 and for a strike. He's been very, very patient, usually 2-0, you know, his type of hitter. He's looking for the fastball just to drive somewhere. And right now, he's really getting that extension off the plate. Here's a 2-1. Pop on the infield. Going to be scooped by the shortstop. Over the first in time, Smith to Kirkpatrick. And one gone here in the home half of the first inning. That's going to bring to the plate Ian Nepp. Bases clear and one out. Nepp, shortstop tonight. You know, we're talking about the uh, the struggles with the offense. You know, Ian, he's not really struggling. His hard part right now is he's hitting balls right at people. And right now he's got to try to find a way to just get balls in the gap and base hits. He's low and outside for ball one. He's always shown good play, uh, play discipline. Um, you know, he likes to take the first pitch and just, you know, see what the pitcher has to offer as far as velocity-wise. The 1-0. Ball two. And so far, the first two hitters of the night is showing really good play discipline, uh, just not chasing. You know, look for pitches that they can drive. Nep waits. 
The 2-0 offering from Keenan. And it's high for ball three. And again, like I'm telling earlier, you know, he's really, you know, shortening that zone for himself to see what he wants to hit. And, you know, that ball's just a little bit up, but normally he would try to chase those. 3 0. Inside, strike one. Yeah, that's, you know, ball's pretty, high, you know, tight inside. That's not what he wants to hit. Now he's looking for like middle, middle in, not up and in. Three one misses for ball four. So Ian Nepp draws a walk. He'll stand down at first. That'll bring Malachi Hayes, the pitcher, to the plate. And this is the spot we want to be in. We want Ian on the bases because he's a very good base runner, and we got, we want Malachi at the plate because right now he's our best hitter. So we are looking for something in the gap and get kind of Ian off off to the races. Towards second, off the second baseman, Kirkendall's glove into right field. That's going to send Rodgers all the way down to third. We'll check that. Nep all the way down to third, and Hayes stands at first. And that's a good job of base running by Ian because Ian did not look back. He picked up his third base coach, Coach Greenwood, waving him on. He just stayed, you know, going hard through the bag and to third base. Excellent job. Now there's a first and third situation. Inc. is getting ready to put their uh, – Put their play in. It's going to bring up the cleanup hitter, Jackson Hersey. And Jackson's been on fire with the bat. He's probably our hottest hitter at the moment. In the last uh, few games, about five hits. Takes a strike, a low outside corner. And Jackson's another one of those hitters who's looking for middle in. You know, he doesn't want to go middle away. You know, he wants to kind of get that ball inside and drive it somewhere in the gaps. For a strike. Yeah, there was no play on as far as a throw down. Second baseman didn't come across the cutoff. Uh, they just, you know, pretty much of an indifference there. Hopefully trying to catch um, Ian over there sleeping, but he's not going to do that. Outside for ball one. Good job by Jackson not to chase the, the uh, waste pitch. You know, he's trying to hunt fastballs. Looking for a piss to drive here. We got corners in, middle back. Here's the one, two. Swings and misses. Four strike three. Two are out. Runners at second and third. It's going to bring Will Rowers to the plate. It's great to see Will. He's starting to catch fire. We've been talking about this for the last few broadcasts. You know, it's really tough for a freshman to come from middle school to this level, but it's starting to catch up to him now. Um, I know last game he was really seeing the ball well, hitting the ball hard. So hopefully this is going to carry over. Driving two runs. In four strike. And as Will gets older, starts maturing, he's going to come up there with a better, you know, better plan of, you know, how to attack the baseball here. But right now he's just so young. And the 0-1, foul back. 0-2 the count. So in this case, he took a very good hack, good swing, just missed. Now he's got 0-2. So his approach has to be different. Well, right now, just putting the ball on the ground to the right side will get a runner in. So he needs to shorten up here a little bit and put the ball in play. Yo 2 back to the screen it goes. Stays alive at 0-2. And, and he's seen the ball well. I mean, he's just missing. Uh, he's not squaring up quite yet. T taking two good swings there, but again, this situation and, and for us, hard you know runs hard to come by. Put the ball in play. No two outside. Ball two strikes now to Will Rowers. You know he's a exciting exciting talent for Coach Greenwood. You know, you've heard all the fanfare the last few years, and now he's here. Rowers fouls it off. That's a good piece of hitting. You know, we talk about two strikes, opening your zone up and, you know, expanding left to right and up and down. And uh, try to inside out that, try to push it to right field. 
you know, he's quickly maturing as a hitter and as a player, especially at his young age as a freshman. Cameron Keenan waits. The one, two, swung on and missed for strike three. To the Panthers, strand runners at second and third. And as we head to the top of the second inning, we are scoreless at McConnell Field. Stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. Welcome back as we head to the top of the second inning in a scoreless game. You see Malachi Hayes making his final warm-up tosses to Jane Rogers behind the plate tonight. The uh, North Buncombe Blackhawks got to send the middle part of their order, Cameron Keenan, Davis Franklin, and Thomas Kirkpatrick to the plate to face Malachi Hayes. Number 19, the pitcher, Cameron Keenan. Keenan, the pitcher tonight. Tall, lanky fella. Stands into the right-handed batter's box. And he takes strike one. Little outside corner. Malachi looks real crisp with his uh, delivery. Very simple, compact. Uh, throwing the ball very well tonight. Off to a really great start. Waiting the 0-1. That's sent into left field for a base hit. So the first hit off of Malachi Hayes. And the Blackhawks have a runner at first. And nobody out. That's going to bring Davis Franklin to the plate. Franklin, the catcher. So we're going to get a courtesy runner now. And for the catcher, or for the pitcher, rather. As Franklin stands in. It's the hard part. When you have a courtesy runner in, usually you're going to have one of your faster guys on the base pass. And again, you know, you kind of got to keep them close. You know, we talked about it a little bit last week about, you know, have varying your looks, keeping them close, having a chance for your catcher. Squares around, does Davis. Fouls it back to the screen. Going one to count. You know, I'm seeing a lot of these teams with small ball tactics. Uh, Pisgah did it, you know, with Harold Shepard. Justin King last week with North Henderson did a lot of it. You know, I talked to him after the game, and he's just like, you know, this day and age, you know, nobody works on that. Nobody knows how to defend that. Throw over to first and back safely. We had a coach here a couple years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, Coach Neitz. You know, he was a big proponent of that also. Just put the ball in play and let them make stupid mistakes while we come around and score. The pressure on the defense, absolutely. Nobody works on it anymore. Everyone wants to just try to hit bombs. That's and right. Throw hard. The 0 1. Leaning. Did he offer at it? Yes, he did. Strike two. I tell you what, this is a good opportunity to put a pitch out on. You know, he's, he's trying to get that run over pretty quickly. Uh, let's see if he takes off. Same lead. 
We'll see if he takes off. The 0 2. Stays put. Sends that one down the third base line. Going to be scooped by the third baseman to first in time. That was a good job by Anderson. Uh, you know, weighed on it in the grass. Just took a little funny hop. He didn't panic. Uh, you know, he's pretty cool under pressure. Picked the ball up, looked over to second, saw, saw no chance, and just fired the ball over to first base. Uh, not bad for a young freshman. You know, it looked like he's been doing it forever. One gone, going to bring Thomas Kirkpatrick to the plate. Does move the uh, courtesy runner over to second. So now a runner in scoring position for North Buncombe. With one gone. That's Kirkpatrick bats, first baseman. I'd like to see how they work the runners over here. Usually you want your second baseman to kind of lean over and keep your shortstop in the hole, especially with a guy like uh, 34 here, uh, which is Kirkpatrick. Looks like he's probably a pull hitter, wants to trying to drive to the left field. For forces our third baseman to stay close to the bag. Hayes comes home and misses outside for ball one. And I like the idea. You know, most college, most college kids, most high school kids want to pull the ball and you want to work them off the plate, especially with a hitter like this. He's a strong, stocky-looking kid. Um, kind of work him off the plate, try to see if he can roll a ground ball over to second base. The 1-0. Curve caught the inside corner for strike one. Good pitch. He buckled him a little bit. He wasn't expecting that. Now it kind of plays with the hitter's mind. I just saw a curveball 1-0 in a hitter's count. One ball, one strike. Get rid of it. Now they've got him in a rundown. And the tag is applied. He's out. That was a great job. So you saw an inside move. He came up like he's going to deliver home. The courtesy runner kind of bounced off, bounced off. And that's what a pitcher's supposed to do. You see it, get the ball out of your hands, and make it happen. Great job. One ball, one strike at the plate. Now two are gone as Kirkpatrick waits. Sends that one on the lip of the grass. And that's going to do it. For the North Buncombe Blackhawks here in the top half of the second inning. We are scoreless here at Macon Middle School. As we head to break, stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the second inning. We are still scoreless here at McConnell Field. Glad you are with us on YouTube and Facebook of the Franklin Panthers Sports Network. Give us a couple of minutes here as uh, we'll have the Panthers batting. They'll take a look at the schedule that's upcoming. Game tomorrow, Smoky Mountain here at McConnell Field. And then next Monday, a week from tonight, it is the Pisgah Black Bears here at McConnell Field. Just looking at our schedule, I mean, we can really go on a run. We have a good game tonight, come back tomorrow. You know, Pisgah, we had a lead over there for most of the game. Be a good chance for kind of turn this ship around. So at the plate for the Panthers, it's Reed Raby, and he takes high for ball one. Thank you, 
There we go. Raby sends that one. Going to be caught on a line for out number one. That's been a lot of our bad luck this year. Hard hit balls. Spe speaking of bad luck, you know, we have Attic Sutton right here who's, again, he's putting the ball in play. He's hitting it right at people. Um, what has he got to do to buy a hit for it to fall in? Everything's looking good. His approach looks, looks really good. Sutton takes a little bit high for ball one. You know, I was talking about his timing a little bit earlier. I think his timing is just a little bit off. The 1-0 bounce towards third. Third baseman fields high throw off the glove of the first baseman. And that will be an error, allowing real hours to reach. Or Reed Raby to reach, rather. Attic Sutton. Or Sutton to reach. <laughs> Somebody like that. That's good for Attic. Sometimes for a hitter who's looking for hits, I think it's just a feel of being on, on the bag. Just getting on the base. He hit the ball. He's on the base. I think this is where we start generating hits. Things will start happening. Here comes the young, as some people may call him a phenom, I guess. Anderson Terrell at the plate. Bounces away from the catcher. That's going to allow Sutton to advance. Now runner in scoring position for the Panthers. With one out, we play on here in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, that's not a pitch that Anderson wants there. Obviously, he's looking for, again, for a lot of these hitters, they want the middle, you know, middle in so they can kind of turn in because a lot of these guys don't want to, you know, go inside out or drive the ball to the right field. Towards second and by the first baseman and the second baseman into right field. They're going to hold the runner at third. He gets away from the catcher. They're going to send Sutton. Play at the plate. He's safe. Throw down to third. They're going to get Anderson Terrell. No, they dropped the baseball at third. Did the third <laughs> baseman. I love it. That's a bang bang play. Obviously, it's really hard for a young umpire from that angle to, to make a good call. He's gonna <laughs> so the no bucking coach is gonna go out there and talk about it, which I mean he's not gonna win the argument. I mean unless there's a third base umpire who's on the play, then you may be able to see it. Now as far as Anderson, this is how you stay in the lineup for the rest of your career. He went backside, drove the ball with a line drive to the right field. You know, he read the ball, he read the throw, got the second base. He's being very aggressive. He's a very heady player. Uh, he's got a lot of skills. This is a great start for us. Great start for Malachi for the fact that now he gets to come out on the, on the mound knowing he's got a lead to protect and he can be really relaxed. And a lot of times for our pitchers, if you're down by one, down by two, knowing that runs are, runs are a premium, I mean, you put a lot of pressure on yourself and, and, and you try to really nibble, try to be really fine with your pitches. Now you may see even the best out of Malachi, which has been very good so far. I saw Coach Greenwood talk to Anderson over there. He's like, Anderson, we don't need this right now. You know, we're averaging a few runs a game. Staying at second base is just as good as being a third because you're in scoring position. Um, but again, I mean, you cannot fault a kid who's trying to be a gamer. Are still talking with the dugout for North Buncombe. Yeah, so the umpire here is pointing at, at the at the coach, and you know this is uh, I, you know, we know this umpire. He's not going to listen to it. He's going to give him a warning. He may eject him, may banish him to the dugout. I can see that happening. It's going to bring Damian Bowles to the plate. With a runner at third. Number 14, Damian Bowles. And one out. One run has come across here for the Panthers at the bottom of the second inning. Bowles pounds that one into the home plate area and is going to get by the second baseman in the right field. Going to play to run. Another exciting young freshman, Damian Bowles. You know, again, he's not trying to do too much. I, I know he wants to really impress, you know, as being a freshman. But just putting the ball in play, you see what happens. Um, you know, the North Buncombe defense is kind of a little bit sloppy right there. And 
you know, with pressure with the runner on third base and scoring them. This is a great, great start for us. Official scorekeeper, was that an error or a hit? That's an error. All right. E4. Throw over to first, and the runner gets back safely. Yeah, Damon's got a little bit of extended lead over here. You know, we always the cut of the grass there. If you're kind of on it or past it, then it's a pretty big lead for us. Air four strike. You know, in these kind of times when you're up 2-0, I like to see movement, you know, hit and run, run and hit, put the ball in play, get the runners going. You know, we've seen a couple errors so far in this, on this defense. Allen misses. He was it up at a ball and a strike. Top of the order, and Jade Rogers on deck for the Panthers. Oh, Damon's got an oven mitt also. Okay. <laughs> he takes off. Low and outside, and Damien will reach second without a throw with that oven mitt. With the oven mitt, correct. <laughs> uh, very good base running there. Uh, he had a really good jump. Uh, you can see the good wheels from Damien. You know, again, he's another exciting young freshman that we will have in the program for the next four years. Here's a 2-0. -oh. Well outside. And again, this is why Jaden Rogers leading off. I mean, he's really narrowing that plate. Uh, he's trying to really trying to get that pitch that he wants to hit and, and hope the pitcher delivers it. 3-1. Swung on and missed. Takes the count full, 3-2. and two. Now, we could say this to her, to her blue in the face, you know, as coaches and up here in the booth, and I keep telling you, and George, I've told you, you know, when you try to attack the right side of the field, a lot of good things happen. 3-2, swung on and missed, strike three. Second strikeout for Cameron Keenan. Two gone for Ian Nepp. And Ian's coming through the plate with the same process, you know, just like Jaden has. He's narrowing that plate down. He's really looking for a pitch he wants. He's going to lay off the pitches he don't want. Um, he's going to start hunting fastballs on the white. He knows he's got to run in scoring position. He's one of our best athletes, one of our best baseball players. Nep drew a walk his last time up, and he takes a ball well outside the first pitch he sees. Yeah, we're not seeing a lot of strikes out of his secondary pitch here from his off-speed. And I think a lot of our hitters are really noticing that and are laying off, which has been a really good job tonight with that we have not done so far this season. 1-0. Bounces away from the catcher, Davis Franklin. That's going to allow Damian Bowles to head on down to third. So the third run this inning is just 90 feet away for the Panthers. Now 2-0 the count at the plate on Ian Nepp. That's Ian being a good, good leader. You know, he's trying to really work that runner over, give him a chance to drive him in. 2-0, oh, well outside. 3-0. and oh. So you're a hitter, and you have the count in your favor. You're going to be seeing a fastball right here. Uh, you know that Malachi is behind you. Who's just our, he's just an elite hitter. But you're a good hitter, too. Do you jump at it? Yes. And it's by the shortstop into left field for a base hit. Another run comes home, and it's 3-0 Panthers. We're seeing a lot of good things. I, I'm telling you, in the last couple games, I know the, the score didn't, has not looked good, but we're seeing, we're seeing those uh, cracks. You know, things are opening up. Uh, the, the zone is opening up. You know, the barrel's getting on the ball. The cough is starting to happen. So, I, I, again, this is where good things start. It's going to bring the pitcher, Malachi Hayes, to the plate. Two out of the inning. Three have come across. Hayes reached on an air his only time up. Sends that one foul down the left field line. Oh, he just missed. Just missed. George Owls, the gapper to the steel face sign to the left side of that scoreboard. Just missed it. Malachi looked very frustrated. <laughs> Runner takes off. Malachi pounds it into the home plate area. Going to be fielded by the third baseman, but he has to put it in his pocket. <laughs> hey, everybody is safe. That's an infield single for Malachi Hayes. 
and brings Jackson Hersey to the plate. Well, in his off time, Al Kyle likes likes the weather. He likes to monitor, uh, you know, precipitation patterns. He know he knows that you know it's been pretty dry around here, so he, he's applied that technique to his swing, trying to drive into the ground and really get that really big hop and get an easy base hit. Well, Hersey is 0 for 1. He struck out his only time up. Sends that one to the screen. 0 and 1 to count. I got Jackson in class, and we talk hitting a lot, and he's been very confident the last couple weeks. You know, sometimes when you start really driving the ball like he has, you almost feel like, ah, oh, I just want to get that one bomb. And he starts, you start pulling back off a little bit. I just hope he stays within himself and try to knock down that second baseman. The 0 1. Fouls it off. The cowbell seems to be getting louder and louder down there. Yeah, he's pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Jackson has two really good swings on that. He is just missing. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are his pitches. Hersey, the whole 0 and 2. Keenan comes set. 0 2. Inside, backs him off. Ball one. All right, so you're in a 1 2 count. Do you start the runners here? Try to put, you know, put it in motion. I kind of like the idea of getting them going here. One, two. Going outside. Hersey laid off. A tough pitch. It tailed away. Two balls, two strikes. Two are out, two are on here in the bottom of the second. I think Jackson has one more chance. I think he's going to look at a dead red fastball. Strike three right down the middle. So the Panthers are able to scratch across three runs. Here in the bottom of the second inning, pick up three hits, a couple of errors for the North Buncombe Blackhawks. And as we head to the top of the third, it's now the Panthers up 3-0. Stay with us. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. Welcome back. We head to the top of the third inning, and it's going to be Kirkendall that will lead it off for the North Buncombe Blackhawks. Zach Kirkendall, first opportunity to face Malachi mm. Hayes, and he <laughs> takes a strike. I think he the filled hook. the umpire. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> He's like, oh. oh. That was a strike. It caught the inside zone. His stuff is as good as it gets right now. He is looking really sharp. That curveball is nasty. Here's the 01. And therefore, a strike. Caught the inside corner again. And not only that, I mean, his curlball's got good velocity on it. It's not just like a sweeper or a frisbee. Now, yeah, I hope he doesn't throw something too fine here for him to hit. Hayes waits. Here's the pitch. And he didn't get him to chase in the dirt. Ball one. Not bad. That was a good waste pitch. I'm glad he didn't throw it in the zone. 
that, that pitch was on purpose. He's just trying to you know make him chase, not throw it in for a strike. There it is. One, two, caught the corner, strike three. One gone for a strikeout of the evening for Malachi Hayes. That will bring to the plate Dalton Anderson, the left fielder. I'm telling you, George, he is nasty tonight. That was a nice inside hard fastball. Outstanding. It's tough. Not bad. Sometimes when you throw too many strikes, they look really good. Just a pitch off in the block may not give you a call, which is unbelievable. But it is what it is. The 1 0. Misses 2 0. He's, throw, he's overthrowing a little bit, just like, you know, my stuff's good. I want to see if I can really pump that fastball in there. Um, let's get the ground ball. Don't try to miss bats. Now, Tom going to be called at the plate is stepping out is Dalton Anderson. On deck, Dylan Silvers, 7-8-9 in the North Buncombe order here in the top of the third. 2-0. It hit him. He didn't make a motion the other way. No argument. All right. It's okay. We got we got half the outs. I know I know in baseball, and that's what it's called, but and people may be confused. It's 33% of the uh, outs, but. It brings Dylan Silvers to the plate. Silvers, the center fielder. You got Will cheating towards the back for a double play opportunity here. Ian playing in the hole. And for a strike. A fake throw down to first. That one popped the mitt with some velocity. 0-1 the count on Silvers. Top of the order on deck at Regan Smith. Yeah, Silvers not much of a lead over there. I'm trying to focus on the hitter here. The 0-1. Low it outside for ball one. Seems like, it seems like the last two hitters, he's kind of rushing his arm just a little bit. So just being easy flowing uh, with his lower half. But usually that's going to happen during a game. You're going to kind of trickle off a little bit and kind of, you know, recalibrate. One ball, one strike now. A throw over to first and back safely is Anderson. A little bit of a bigger lead here. We already see North Buncombe try to, you know, move the runners with bunts and hit and runs and whatnot. 1-1. One, one. Did he offer at it? Yes, he did throw to first as the runner was hanging off the bag. And he's in safe. Ball two strikes now on Silvers. That was a very nice pop throw by Jaden. And, and, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is the first baseman's got to do a good job catching and applying the tag. And, and how Jackson did that was perfect. And that's what you want. Your, that's how you coach it. Just missed him. Ball, two strikes. Misses high, evens it up. Two balls and two strikes. He's got to remember, this is the nine-hole hitter. He's at the bottom of the order. He could be aggressive here. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Runner at first. Swung on and missed strike three. Second strikeout this inning. For Malachi, top of the order we go, and two out. Yeah, good job there. Uh, didn't let let it get away from him. Now it's not bad with you know having a leadoff hitter on with uh, you know with two outs because if you can eliminate him here, you don't have to deal with him in the next inning, leading off with wheels. Smith flied out his only time up to lead off the ball game. Now throw to first. So here are some of the things I never liked as a coach, even coaching on this field. You know, if, if Malachi throws that away, it's going to hit the wall going the right field. He's on third base with the leadoff hitter up, and that's tough. Nice snag by Rogers to keep it to going the, to the backstop. Ball one. So these are the things that we always talk to our pitchers about, you know, back in the old days, I guess. You know, just understand where you are in the game, understand the outs, understand the, you know, the circumstance. Don't put ourselves in a bad situation. Awaiting the 1-0 pitch. Runner takes off. 
in the air, right field. Raby will catch it for out number three. So the Blackhawks get a runner on, but they can't advance him. And as we head to the bottom of the third inning, it's 3-0 Franklin. Stay with us. My name is Tanner Jones. I'm a sophomore, and I play golf. My grandpa influenced me and taught me how to play golf. My favorite golfer is Tiger Woods. Fix it. Oh! <laughs> hey, he's out of here. <laughs> My favorite course so far that I've played on is Springdale Country Club. I would like to play college golf at Division II or higher, and I'd also like to move on to the Cord Ferry Tour. The Athlete of the Month has been presented by First Citizens Bank, helping families and businesses make more of their finances for over 125 years. First Citizens Bank, forever first, member FDIC. And by Corbin Dental, a locally owned dental practice providing comprehensive and advanced dental care in Franklin. They take pride in providing world-class care right here at home. Welcome back as we head to the Bottom of the third inning, Franklin on top, 3 nothing. It's in the uh, middle part of the order to the plate. It's going to be Will Rowers, you see, taking a couple of practice swings. That'll lead it off here in the bottom of the third inning. Reed Raby and Attic Sutton will bat this inning. It was uh, Raby and Sutton and Terrell that got the inning started back at the second end. Able to play three runs, get a rally going, and take a lead. Something the Panthers have uh, not had a lot of this season. Get some confidence at the plate is what they've needed, and that one is fouled off. Strike one. Yeah, you just said it, George. Getting confidence at the plate. Yep. Um, you know, right there you see Will. You know, I, I know as a hitter, the last thing you want to do is swing on a first pitch curveball. And um, I guess I guess growing with experience, he's, he's going to figure that out, to lay off those pitches and look for the fastball. Waiting the 0-1. Rower swings and gets a piece of it. 0-2. And, and that's the thing with Will. You know, his first plate appearance took really good swings and fouled off a lot of pitches, and everything looked great. And then he strikes out. And a lot of times you look for a fix for that, but there's no fix for that. You just need to go up there with confidence and see what you're trying to hit and, you know, barrel the ball up and hit it hard. Did the uh – Umpire, he took that foul ball off. So we got a, we got our trainers out there. Obviously, Lynette Gibson, the elite of the elite, um, probably put some healing hands like Jesus, and <laughs> may even take about twenty years back of his, you know, back onto his life. Nursing the umpire back to health. We got a uh, pause in the action. Let me tell you about the upcoming schedule here on uh, FPSN. We've got more baseball for you tomorrow on the network right here at McConnell Field. It is the Smoky Mountain Mustangs. And then Pisgah Black Bears a week from the ninth here at McConnell Field. That's more baseball for you as uh, we get pretty much done with the home slate. Only two games at home after the eighth in uh, April. Here's the uh, schedule for the Panthers. Show that quickly as uh, we'll get back to action here. You see a bunch of road games coming up in April. All right, back to action. Got him all ready to go behind the plate. And Rauer swings and misses for strike three. One gone to lead off the Bottom of the third inning, it's Reed Raby now at the plate. Flight out is only time up. I think that was tough for Will. You know, Will's seen a lot of curveballs so far in the first two at-bats, and it's 0-2, and here comes a hard fastball. It was a little bit late on that. Here's the pitch. Popped up on the infield. Looks like the pitcher will make the play. Yes, he will. 
Route number two quickly. Two gone as Cameron Keenan secured that lazy pop. Brings Sutton to the plate. And, and George, that's where the game has gone in the last five, six, seven years. You know, we're not just trying to put the ball in play with two strikes. We're going to swing out of our shoes. We're going to try to just, you know, get that extra base hit instead of just, you know, doing old school baseball. The O. That one set into left field down our blind spot, and it is a foul ball. Or that was he has a fair ball? It says foul ball. Okay. Everybody on the infield was acting like it was a fair ball. I thought he said foul. I think Addicts is so excited around the bases. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm going to go <laughs> I'm tired of hitting the ball to everybody. I want to feel <laughs> what that feeling of a double that should have had. Just like run the base. Ten times ready. Take some practice in doing that. It was about what? About 20 years ago or so, there was a uh, Major League Baseball uh, promotional campaign. Chicks dig the long ball. <laughs> yeah. I think it's coming back around. The 0 1 sent towards oh. third. Bray up with it. Over to first in time. Poor addicts. That'll do it for the bottom of the third inning. So one, two, three, go the Panthers in the third inning. We head to the fourth. Three nothing, Franklin. Stay with us. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. Top of the order. Welcome back. We head to the top of the fourth with the Panthers on top. 3-0, Malachi Hayes making his final warm-up tosses. There goes the throw down. We'll see the top of the order leading off for North Buncom as Brady Ray will step to the plate. The fourth inning is always the key inning in baseball games, especially high school baseball. I mean, I was always growing up, you know, just been taught that, taught that down in South Florida. Um, and usually when you get to college baseball, it's usually the fifth inning. It's trying to a halfway point, and you want to win this inning. First pitch a little bit high for ball one. So a lot of times as a pitcher, again, you just got to get that feeling. I'm, I'm going to make my pitches. I'm going to be in the zone. I'm going to get the ground ball. Strikeouts are a plus. But I'm going to continue to be aggressive, trying to attack bats. I don't know where that missed. And I think Malachi is stunned. Um, <laughs> that's unbelievable. As what Coach Green would always say, was that ball too far down the middle? Uh, that's, that's good. I like that. I may have to use that one again. The 2-0. That one's right down the middle, and that's a strike. I mean, that fastball was – I would probably call that ball before the other one, but that was still a strike. So, I don't know. That's okay. Two balls, one strike. Hayes comes set. And that one misses. Three and one. I don't get it, Malachi. Malachi never shows emotion. So he's upset. He's going to turn around, grab something on the ground, just kind of get his composure back. You know, he's somebody you can trust on your team and on the mound to, to show you know maturity. Three, one. And therefore, strike. <laughs> again, again, that is a strike. But those other two curveballs were better pitches. 3-2. Yeah. Two. 
Blackhawk third baseman waits to pay off. Pitch. Misses outside. Ball four. Okay, so this is key. I, I kept saying, you know, at the top of, you know, of this inning, the fourth inning is the most important inning, and don't lose your composure. And, and Ian Neff's out there, and Ian knows the situation. You know he's one of the smartest baseball players you've had in a while. He's talking to Malachi. He's like, listen, we got a 3-0 lead. Just relax. You're throwing good pitches. You know, he's trying to break up any kind of momentum that could happen. And he's getting towards the bottom of the order. Just stay under control. It's going to bring Gray Reedy to the plate. Flyed out his only time up. It was the first walk issued by Hayes. Throw to first. And back safely is the runner, Ray. In that situation, it's good to throw over. You, know, you have a 3 0 lead and uh, nobody out. And he's got a really big lead out there. He's taken off. Really big lead. Throw over. Gets away from the pitcher at the mound. And now that, that's going to allow Ray to uh, head on down to second. The Ian, throw came back. It just lipped off his glove. You can tell Ian being really heads up, telling Anderson to get back to third base. It's a guy you want on your team. Reedy has not received a pitch yet. He's going to square. Corners charge. Back to the screen it goes for strike one. I love the small ball element. I really do. Uh, you can tell how effective it is with Pisgah doing it, North Henderson doing it. You see a little bit tonight. Um, it's a great way to squeeze over runs, especially if they're down three to nothing. Just get one and get one another inning, and then the ball game's close. Awaiting the 0-1. Swing it away. Pops it into center. Camping under it is Bowles. He'll make the play, throw down to third. They'll keep Excellent. the runner at second. Great job by Damian. Got under the ball, threw a good laser. Just a one good one hop to the third baseman. And for an outfitter, you always want to show your arm off. And right there for a freshman, you know, pretty much, you know, straight away middle center field, showed a good arm. Malachi, great job back at the base. Want to protect the lead as best he can. That'll bring the pitcher, Cameron Keenan, to the plate. He singled the only hit off of Malachi so far. That came back at the second inning. Runner at second, one out. Keenan at the plate. Long look. Love it. Curve caught the inside corner for strike one. You know, some of our pitchers struggle with that. You know, they one look, go home, one look, go home. And you can do one, two, three looks. You can just stare them down. You can stare at home plate. You can just go as slow as possible. And, you know, again, Malachi is a veteran, seasoned, very intelligent, knows what he's doing, protecting the lead, keeping that runner close. Wow, Malachi got a step off. I love the idea of Wheel playing close to, close to the bag. We're okay. Let Ian play the hole. Now step off and we'll chase the runner back. Got to remember he picked a runner off earlier in the game with a good inside move. The one. Nice pitch. He offered at it. Could not check his swing. 0-2. That was nasty, but, you know, one of the things that you noticed there uh, with the runner at second base, Malachi staring her down. The runner took two steps back. Malachi went home. Great job, great job on Malachi, keeping that runner close. Well, again, that sign issues. It's, uh, they're going to meet at uh, the mound, Rogers and and uh, Hayes, and talk things over here. Yeah, he's probably thinking about their sequence. You know, let's just not just throw down a sign because you can have a relay from the runner at yep. second base to the to the hitter here. And uh, especially with two strikes. Now, he has a waste pitch or, or two to get him to chase, and he chased a really bad. He actually chased a good pitch out of the zone. He may do it again here. Long look by Hayes. The one two pitch. Runner takes off outside, and he'll take third without a throw. 
Yeah. You got to know the runners. That's why they're scattering ports through Major League Baseball and college and whatnot. And no, I know North Punk is not in our conference, but you got to really pay attention when you're in high school baseball to find out what these runners and hitters and fielders they all can do. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at third. That one's in the dirt. Runs at full, three and two. So the first run of the night for the Blackhawks is just 90 feet away. One gone in the inning. 3-2 count at the plate on Cameron Keenan, the pitcher. Payoff pitch. Just missed. Ball four. The second walk issued by Malachi puts runners on the corners for Davis Franklin. And nobody's hurt here. You still got, you know, you have a 3-0 lead. Uh, you got one out. You got first and third. We're going to put the sign on here. Now, you have plenty of options here in the fourth inning. You can throw down. You know, James is, you know, he's got a good arm. He can run, he can gun down the runner. Um, you can have your second base and cut across between the mound and second base and try to cut the runner off. You can do the typical fake to throw and go back to third, which never works. <laughs> um, You're right. But I like to see here, I like to see corners in. Uh, I would like to see Anderson on the grass. Obviously, uh, Jackson's got to hold the runner. Like to see the middle infield play even, not beat, not deep at all. Got a courtesy runner at first now for the pitcher. Ryan Moffitt is running at first. Franklin at the plate, and he takes a strike. And a courtesy runner, Moffitt, will take second without a throw. Yeah, the the runner first base at a delay steal, just kind of like three three or three glides and a go. Uh, good job there by the runner. I th God, Lee. I like to see him filled in right here. Shading back, middle, middle of the dirt. 0-1. That's a great pitch. Just missed. Ball one. So in this situation, I like to see Jackson on the cut of the grass. I want to see Anderson on the cut of the grass. I want to see uh, Will Rowers at the grass, and I would love to see Ian just kind of playing on the runner's hip, just keeping him close, moving back and forth so you can feel him. One ball, one strike. That one's a little bit low. The ball, too. I mean, I hate to say this, you know, but sometimes I feel like the pitch is getting squeezed a little bit, making good pitches, not getting the calls. So now he's got to be careful with the 2-1 count. He could throw a curveball anytime he wants. Here's the 2-1 from Malachi. In the air, so center field. Bowls, backs, three, three. catches. They'll tag up at third. Run comes home to score. And that's okay. So you're basically training out for a run. Nobody's hurt. We're, we're still winning three to one. We got two outs. We want to limit damage here in, a, in the fourth inning, which I said before. Uh, it's a very key inning in a ball game. It's kind of your momentum, your momentum starter. So runner at second and two out. It's going to bring Thomas Kirkpatrick to the plate. Moffat, the runner, gets a pretty decent lead at second. As Malachi looks back at him. First offering is high for ball one. I like how our outfield's shaded right now. We got our pretty much in what we call a seven, eight, nine zone. They're all in an eight zone, kind of, kind of straight away, and normal depth, just enough to where they can gonna run, run her down on a base hit. Here's the one zero pitch. Nice pitch. Caught the corner. Evens it up at a ball and a strike. So far, no hits in the inning, but two walks have been the bugaboo for Malachi Hayes. One's come across after the sack fly. The stolen bases mixed in there as well as that one is outside for ball two. Walks always kill, and that's the thing, you know. You try to teach young players, young pitchers, you know, don't be a nibbler. Don't try to try to get strikeouts, get them to chase a lot. Just, you know, attack bats, attack the barrels. Good things happen. 2 1. Try to paint the outside corner and missed. 3 and 1 now on Thomas Kirkpatrick. 
Seems like he's really relying on his curveball in this setting. Um, Let's see him more try to try to run a fastball or cut his fastball a little bit. Like a, like a hard inside fastball would be really good with this type of hitter. Here's a 3-1. In the air, pretty well left field. Sutton at the wall. They don't make the play for out number three. So Kirkpatrick put a charge in it, but Sutton was there to secure it at the warning track. Blackhawks do scratch across the run as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's now Franklin three and North Buncom one. Stay with us. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Franklin up 3-1 with the Blackhawks of North Buncombe in this non-conference affair at McConnell Field. Bottom of the order coming up, 8-9 and then 1 for Coach Jerry Greenwood and the Panthers. Up 3-1. We'll see if the Panthers can get some insurance runs. Anderson Terrell last time up singled. It was back in the second inning. Came around to score. Leading off for the Panthers is number one, third baseman Anderson Carroll. Remaining out on the bump for North Buncombe, it's Cameron Keenan. As the first offering well outside. One and no to Anderson Terrell. Just exciting to see him get a base hit. His last at bat uh, kind of jumpstart his career here. Pounds it into home plate, fielded by the second baseman. Tough play, and it's an infield single. And that's a uh, base hit because, you know, we got plus, plus wheels. That's good things that happen. And obviously the second baseman had to come all the way to his right and kind of flip his hits to make, trying to make a good throw, and Anderson's going to run it out. So, so Anderson Terrell is two for two in the game. And that's going to bring <laughs> Damian Bowles to the plate. He reached on an error. Get yeah, second inning. You got Anderson hitting the ball hard on the ground, getting base hits, and you got people like Attic hitting at everybody. Can't Go get one through. First and back safely is yeah, no, is Terrell. Damien's doing a good job so far. Great, great night tonight in center field. Squares, bunts, going to be fielded by Keenan. Throws to first in time. I love that, George. So he gets the ball. It wasn't the best bunt. You want your bunt to go left or right, not back to the pitcher. But he went hard down the line. He was excited he got the bunt down. Um, and that's great. You know, a lot of times hitters think that bunt is just not a good – it's not good for you, not good for the game. But it doesn't hurt your batting average. It was a sack. Now you got a runner in scoring position and your leadoff hitter. Jaden Rogers at the plate. Struck out, grounded out. He's 0 for 2. And he takes high and tight for ball one. I mean, so far tonight, a lot of our damage offensively has been coming from our young young hitters. There we go. Gets away from the catcher. Well, advance the runner. 2-0 and at the plate. And the fourth Panther run just 90 feet away. So once again, Jay needs to cut his swing down, choke up a little bit, and just poke it. As we used to say back in the day, choke and poke. 2-0. Towards short, that'll be fielded 
by Smith. Fires to first in time. That scores a run. Two out. See, and that's a little bit of small ball. You have a runner gets on on a chopper of a hit. Then you have a bunt to get him over. Wild pitch gets him over to third, and they're just putting the ball in play. I mean, again, if, if all of our hitters could buy into that, just to buy into, hey, let's move runners over, let's just put the ball in play, let's get runners runs in, let's make our pitchers feel comfortable, then we start winning again. Ian Nepp stands in. He's one for two. He takes a ball. Singled his last time up, drew a walk in the first inning. Had a good feeling about Ian tonight. You know, just, just again, another Panther with a lot of bad luck. But he's starting to break through. A little bit low for ball two. You know, the best part with this, with this type of team is you have a head coach in Coach Greenwood. You know, he's not a yeller or screamer. He's a confidence builder. 2-0 and for a strike. I mean, he's going to tell his hitters, you know, if, if you're struggling, you're not hitting ball or you're striking out. He's like, it's just relax. Just play the game. Play the game. We all have confidence in you. We're not taking you out of lineup. Let's keep playing. 2-1, tapped to third. On a hop, Ray to first in time. Panthers able to use a little small ball, like you've been talking about, Brian, and play to run. Four to one we go to the fifth now. Stay with us. My name is Tanner Jones. I'm a sophomore, and I play golf. My grandpa influenced me and taught me how to play golf. My favorite golfer is Tiger Woods. That's it. Oh! <laughs> hey, he's out of here. <laughs> My favorite course so far that I've played on is Springdale Country Club. I would like to play college golf at Division II or higher, and I'd also like to move on to the Corn Ferry Tour. The Athlete of the Month has been presented by First Citizens Bank, helping families and businesses make more of their finances for over 125 years. First Citizens Bank, forever first, member FDIC. And by Corbin Dental, a locally owned dental practice providing comprehensive and advanced dental care in Franklin. They take pride in providing world-class care right here at home. Speed up. Welcome back as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Panthers up four to one. You see Malachi Hayes making his final warm-up tosses. Zach Kirkendall, bottom of the order, will face Malachi seven, eight, and nine. Dalton Anderson and Dylan Silvers slated to bat a couple of uh, strikeouts in the bottom half of the order for North Buckle. We'll see if Malachi can continue his uh, dominance in the bottom half of this uh, North Buckham order. Only one hit given up so far in the game by Malachi. Yeah, I'm wondering right now what his pitch count is because this is the absolute most crucial inning for him to stay in the game. Can he get through the 7-8-9, not by getting strikeouts necessarily, but just by getting uh, outs with the minimum amount of pitches as possible? Popped it up. That's Kirkendall on the infield. Looks like the shortstop Ian Nett will call off everybody and make the play. One pitch, one out. Ah, pitcher's best friend. Yep, no doubt about that. That will bring to the plate now. Dalton Anderson. And I know Greenwood and uh, Coach Taylor is really hoping that he can get through this inning really quick, um, get through the top of the order to sixth inning with a small pitch count. Anderson was hit by a pitch his only time up. Fouls that one to the screen. 0-1 oh, the count to Dalton Anderson. And again, he's attacking the zone. Making hitters attack the baseball, try to get a barrel on it, fouling them off, getting ahead of the count. It's all you ask for. The 0 1. The low. Evens it up. I'm kind of wondering if his lower half's getting tired because I'm seeing a lot more upper body torque. Mm -hmm. uh, just still not look. He's starting to look like he's kind of easing up a little bit. 
instead of being even flowing. 1-1, one, one. swung on and missed. So a good point right here, he's, the, he's ahead of the count. You know, again, you have waste pitches, but, but you're at the eight hitter. Be aggressive, attack the zone. Don't waste pitches here, especially when you have the big lineup coming up, top of the order, coming up next inning. Fouled off at the plate, stays alive. That's Dalton Anderson. Everyone straight away in the infield and the outfield. Now Tom going to be called at the plate. Anderson steps out. Addicts is pretty deep in left. Ridge shallow and right. Damian straight away center. The one-two offering. A little high and tight. Two balls and two strikes now to Dalton Anderson. Yeah, but that's on purpose. He's trying to change his eye level. I want to see the ball up in his eyes. I see a curveball coming right here. It's a setup pitch. 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Or maybe not. Came with the heater that time. It's going to bring Dylan Silvers to the plate. He struck out his only time up. Back to number one, Dylan Silvers. By the way, the uh, cowbell has made the comment section on YouTube. Oh boy. Not a fan. They're not a fan. <laughs> well, too bad I can't use my AD duties to go down there. <laughs> Somebody is uh, requesting they be ejected. <laughs> ejected? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for using the cowbell. <laughs> is that a Franklin fan? I don't know. I, I, I can't tell. Unlike Facebook, you really can't tell a lot of times on, on YouTube. Well, it's always true. <laughs> Everything on Facebook's true. Oh, absolutely. Anything you read in the comment section. <laughs> The 0-1 towards second. Nice play. Diving. Will Rowers to first. Got him. What a play. <laughs> a shingle leather and then able to somehow get it over to first. Rowers retires the side. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Bottom of the fifth we go. Franklin up 4-1. to one. Stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning at McConnell Field. Panthers will send the middle part of the order to the plate. It'll be Malachi Hayes that will lead it off. Malachi, and we'll see J uh, Jackson, Hersey, and Will Rowers to bat here in the fifth inning. So far in the ball game tonight, Hayes is one for two. Reached on an air, and he's single. He's reached both plate appearances. Keenan deals a little bit low for ball one. Hmm, interesting. Pitcher doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Consistent across the board. I wonder if because of the foul ball hit off the umpire, maybe changed his. It's uh, the 1-0, a little bit outside. 2-0. Changed his depth perception there. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just sending our trainer Jesus down there. Oh, yeah. She played a little bit of magic on this April Fool's Day. 2-0. <laughs> A little loaf. Ball three. <laughs> Pitcher's upset, just like Malachi. Turns around, <laughs> looks at his infielder. So what, what can I do? 
Come on. 3-0. Ball four. <laughs> oh, he's upset. Now he's showing the umpire up. <laughs> he threw his palms up. Umpire didn't see it. So that'll bring Jackson Hersey to the plate. Hersey, a couple of strikeouts. Now the uh, fans right below us are chiming in. Look pretty good from here, Blue. They're good looking pitches. I don't know what to say. So, <laughs> in for a strike. Going one on Hersey. If I'm a North Bunkham fan, I'll be I'll be upset, but. Runner first, nobody out. As we play in the bottom of the fifth inning. Runner takes off at first. Throw comes up the line. And Hayes is safe at second. <laughs> Sound like you were just quoting a line from Major League. <laughs> just a little bit outside. Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> I like it. You may look like Hayes. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. Oh, almost hit him. He bailed out. All right. Two so, and one. So here we go. We got a runner on uh, second base. Nobody out. Almost hit him. Jax has got to be sitting dead red here. The fastball just stayed within himself. 2-1. Oh, oh. Hit the umpire again. Got him again. Mm. Trainer Jesus. Hit him on the shoulder this time. I'm watching her. She's, she's peeking up. Oh, she's making her way over. Now she's pulled up. Like she's not giving us calls. I'm not gonna help him out. No. We'll see. We'll see, uh, Lynette. No, uh, he's there gonna, we go. It, oh, she's over. She's right there, behind the stands here. She's like, come on, tough it out. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a. Uh, there she is. I got a good shot of Lynette. Yep. That was a tough pitch. It was right off, like between his shoulder and his neck area. So now you got a 2-2 count with Jackson, and Jackson's got to be very smart here. This pitcher's throwing a lot of a lot of breaking pitches tonight. I would I would really love to see him just kind of really again choke up like we talked about earlier, just pound the ball on the ground, move the runner over, maybe the defense throw the ball away, maybe get a base hit out of it. Two balls, two strikes to Jackson Hersey. Runner at second, nobody out. Hersey sends one to first. Kirkpatrick able to eventually scoop it and take it to the bag. Round number one does run the uh, move the runner over. Now the fifth Panther run just 90 feet away. That'll bring Will Rowers to the plate. It's all about the little things, you know. You just even if it's ground out, you're frustrated and get a base hit, but you move the runner over, and if it's a wild pitch, he scores. Now here's the man with the flash in the leather come to the plate here. You know what happens, George, when you. Uh, Make a great play in the field. Rowers at the plate. Takes a little bit low for ball one. Struck out his last plate appearance. Usually a great play in the field will result in a great uh, bat here. So let's see if this happens. Mm. Swings and misses. Had a big cut at that one. All good swings. Just missing. It's frustrating, I know. You know, his, his mechanics look good, his swing looks good, just missing and just got to be confident. 1-1, one, one, sends it foul, third baseline. And the whole ball, two strikes is Rowers. Again, Will is one of the fastest, fastest players on the field here, uh, one of the fastest in our school. Just putting the ball in play, pushing it to the right side, getting an RBI. Maybe he could beat it out for, for an infield hit. Anything, just put the ball in play. One, two, foul back. Rowers stays alive. A ball, two strikes. On deck, it's Reed Raby. One out, runner at third. Alakai Hayes led off this inning with a walk if you just join us. One, two. Goffs go. that one into left field. Going to be a tough play for Reedy. He's going to make it. Hayes tags at third. And he's going to make it home safely. And the Panthers now up 5-1. to one. There you go. So you have a sack fly. Will put the ball in play. Got himself an RBI. Doesn't count against his batting average. 
just getting the little things done. And Malachi scores for his own assurance run. Extend the lead to four runs. So that brings to the plate Reed Raby. A pair of flyouts for Raby. He's 0 for 2. Yeah, his first about hit a rock at the right field. He's seen the ball well. He's just getting unlucky. In for a strike. Pops the mitt low and inside. I like how, you, how close he is to the plate. Very strong hitter. He can handle the inside pitch. 0-1. Just missed. He was it up at a ball and a strike. And that's something consistent I've seen all night. Our hitters have been has done a very good job really understanding the plate zone or the strike zone tonight. 1-1. One, one. The low, 2-1. We, we've seen so far in the beginning of the season, we were chasing a lot of those pitches. Um, you know, maybe that's something that Green was working on in practice in, in the cages. Understand the zone. 2-1 offering. 3-1. Pitch looks like he's got a little discomfort in his back, kind of stretching out a little bit. Maybe he's frustrated. Reed's pitch coming right now. 3-1. Out off, runs it full. Yeah. Got a little bit late there. Three balls, two strikes, two are out. That's all four. All right, addicts, here we go. It's gonna break. It's gonna break right now. He's the most unluckiest hitter in America. I got a, uh, a meeting on the mound here. Just so, keep, just keep the same approach. Sutton did reach back in the second inning via an error, but he grounded out to third his last time up. Officially 0 for 2. He's just, he's just again, to him it's timing, just kind of watching it. Talked to his dad about it uh, last week. Um, it's like, you know, what's going on? It's like it's just maybe just a little bit of timing issue. You know, he's not getting loaded early in his, you know, in the plate on the pitch. Um, you know, as the pitcher's delivering, he's not getting his front foot down earlier enough. And that's the key, you know, your load, getting that front foot down and just trying to tack the ball out front. He's kind of getting handcuffed a little bit too much. So the meeting is over. Sutton comes strolling to the plate. And here's the thing, he just walked this hitter in four straight, or the runner who's on, on first base, Reed. Now batting number 15, Attic Sutton. If I'm coming to the plate after seeing that, I'm looking for that first fastball and I'm going to jump on it with fast hands, firing the barrel out front. Throw to first, and back safely is Reed Raby. Because they went to the mound, they're saying that runner first doesn't matter, there's two outs, let's go get the hitter. Jumping on the fastball. Raby takes off, hit and run. Base hit, Raby stops at second. Two are on with two out. And Alex Sutton gets that elusive hit. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy for him. <laughs> it's tough. It's yeah. tough. You do all the right things. He, he does all the right things. He's, you know, he, he's a leader. He, he works hard. He cheers for everybody. Um, you never question his motive. You know, and I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Hopefully he starts getting them in bunches now. Brings Anderson Terrell to the plate. Terrell Oops. sends it to second. Kirkendall up with it, over to first in time. Panthers able to play to run. And strand two on the base pads. And as we head to the sixth, it's the Panthers now up 4-5-1. Stay with us.
<laughs> we head to the sixth inning here at Macon Middle School and McConnell Field. Five to one, Franklin on top of the North Buncombe Blackhawks. You see leadoff man this inning and the leadoff man in the order. Reagan Smith, a little step to the plate. All right, here we go. Don't change your approach, Malachi. Sends it down the third baseline. It's a fair ball into left field. Runs Heading all the way down to second. Reagan Smith with a leadoff double. Very good wheels from the leadoff hitter, you can tell by that. Um, now we're getting the approach here from Malachi. And Jaden's going to go talk to him. Um, I'm not sure if it's a sign situation. It could be. But the thing is, you have a four-run lead. The runner at second base doesn't matter. The runner, the hitter in the box doesn't matter. Just make your pitches. If you give up one or two right. runs, it's okay. But let's get through this top of the order and get to the seventh inning, and we'll get going here. There's Brady Ray that will stroll to the plate. Walked, came around to score back in the fourth inning, and he flew out all the way back in the first inning. It's the second hit off of Malachi Hayes as the – Curve catches the corner for strike one. Yeah, we don't want to leave those pitches up like that. Speed those bats up, especially the curveball's a little bit flat. The 0 1. Oh, misses for ball one. Ray Reedy on deck, 1 2 and 3. North Buncom order here in the top of the sixth. Hayes comes to the belt. Now nice. the fake. Get the runner to head back to second. I'm telling you, if I'm Malachi right now, I'm playing mind games that runner. I will stare him down. I'll make him call time. I'll make the hitter call time. Get him all frustrated. Get the fans all going crazy. That's the fun part about being a pitcher. 1-1. One, one. Nice pitch. Fouled off. Ball two strikes now on Brady Ray. It's a great time to find out who's the mental midgets out here in the field by doing that. Ray is 0 for 2, walk and a fly out. By the way, Ryan, you can see a great shot of the mitt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> From our center field camera. One, two, right up the middle. Going to be scooped by Rowers to first in time. That'll move the runner over. Now the second North Buncombe run, just 90 feet away, but one's gone. It'll bring Reedy to the plate. And, and that's the positive part about having – I know having a runner second is not positive, but when you have your shortstop playing the hole with a right-handed hitter who's going to pull, and you got your second baseman playing more towards – the bag, the center field, you're in position to make those, you know, those plays. Ray Reedy at the plate. He's 0 for 2. And Reedy takes well outside. Four ball one. The 1-0. Foul back. He evens it up. So here we go, runner on third base. His run does not matter at all. So make good pitches here. I kind of like the idea of uh, Will shading more towards the bag, kind of playing uh, straight away. Yep. I mean, Jackson's covering a lot of ground over there to the right side anyway. 1-1. One, one. Misses. 2-1. That's another good pitch. Yeah. At the knees. Sometimes you got to recognize that as a catcher, kind of stick it out front to kind of show the umpire that's a strike. Here's the 2-1. Oh, laid off. 3-1. That's why if you, if you watch a lot of major league games or college games, you see the catcher really extending his arm out and catching the ball out front so the umpire can see it. If that ball kind of disappears, the umpire's going to think it's a ball. 3-1 pitch. Kicked foul down the first baseline. It'll run the count full, three and two. Yeah. 
Gray Reedy, the DH for the Blackhawks. And that three hole tonight. They're a pump a fastball, make him hit it. Payoff pitch from Hayes. Ball four, tried the curve and missed. Runners on the corners for the Blackhawks. That'll bring the pitcher, Cameron Keenan, to the plate. This will be a good opportunity for, uh, you, know, the, you know, Coach Taylor or Coach Green to walk out to the mound, just kind of slow the momentum down. You know, the runner hasn't scored yet. We've got first and third. we got one out. That was a third walk issued by Malachi. I mean, you don't have a runner first base, you know, with the, you know, plus plus wheels. I don't see anything been put on right here. Runners on the corners with one out. Right down the middle for strike one. The other thing, if you know, if, if you're paying attention on you know YouTube or if you're in the stands or if you're actually in a dugout, you know one thing North Buncombe has done tonight is done the delay steal, and uh, that's something to keep a, keep an eye out for. Especially with the runner at third. Here's the 0-1. Runner stays put, gets away from the catcher. He can't find it. Rogers can't find it. Heading all the way down to third. They're going to throw down, and they may get him. No, he's going to be up the bag. And he is safe down at third. So a run comes home to score to make it a 5-2 Panther advantage. And heading all the way down to third is Gray Reedy. Yeah, Malachi didn't point to where that ball is at. Didn't, didn't help Jaden out. Uh, I know Malachi was extremely frustrated in that pitch, but you still got to kind of keep the runners at bay a little bit. One one. It's interesting. Come on, man. Big pitch right here. One ball, two strikes. Keenan waits. And it sells out of the zone, evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. They're gonna see if he went around and asked the yeah. uh, umpire behind the pitcher if he had a view up. Yeah, 100 out of 100 times, the umpire's gonna say, safe, I didn't see it. Because you can't see where the barrels is, not down the line. Yeah. That's the disadvantage of only having a two umpire crew. Two balls, two strikes, runner at third, one out. Good pitch. Runs at full, three and two. I don't get it. I don't get where he's missing. I don't see Jaden set up to the outside or inside corner. I see him set up down the middle. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Need a visit. Runners back on the corners now with one out. That will bring to the plate Davis Franklin. So back-to-back -back walks. I'm trying to see if uh, they're going to get somebody down in the bullpen to warm up a little bit. I'm telling you what I'm doing right now. If you know who you're going to get down in to warm up, you need to go to the mound and kind of delay time to get him loose. Because no matter how good you are, how great you are, and we all know Malachi is great, you know, sometimes you just, you know, just kind of lose at the end. Give out of gas. Franklin tonight is 0 for 2. Did have a uh, sack fly back in the fourth inning and a ground out. Runners get their leads. Franklin takes in the dirt for ball one. Doesn't get too terribly far away from Rodgers. I didn't see anybody warming up down between innings either, so I'm not sure what's happening. But I think we're going to get a time right here, and Coach Taylor's going to come to the mound. Uh, probably discuss situations. He could be at his pitch limit. I'm not sure yet. Um, could make a move. But usually Greenwood makes that move. So meeting on the mound. He'll talk things out. Yeah, it's just more of a confidence thing. It's just, you know, again, he says, Malachi, you have, you have good stuff tonight. Uh, you're kind of letting off on your pitches a little bit. You're worrying about the runners too much. 
but, but again, you, know, you get a 5-2 ball game with one out. They get to really keep these runners close. It's a first and third situation. You know, if you have a first and third and your runner at first base is not really, you know, not super fast, I think you got to throw down and trade it out for a run to get out of the inning. I mean, this is why having leads like a 5-1 to lead and a 5-2 to lead, you can make that decision to trade it out for a run. They're going to leave Malachi in. Meeting is over as Franklin strolls back to the right-handed batter's box. But I'm also a big fan. I'm a huge fan of the second baseman cutting it off, like cheating, starting off even with the bag, and coming right behind the mound to cut that ball off. The 1-0. Caught the inside corner with the curve, evens it up. Because my, my theory on that is if you're going to let the runner from first get the second with pretty much an indifference, why not just cut it off to see if he takes off running with you doing that? 1-1. One, one. A little high, 2-1. and Because one. one thing I do know, I do know that our second baseman, who's not a second baseman, he's a shortstop, who has a cannon, and he's extremely fast and athletic. What a great opportunity to do that here. Throw over to first and back safely. The 2 1 offering in the air, foul right behind home plate. Evens it up, two balls and two strikes. It's funny, with the, the microphone's so close to the dugout, and I'm listening to these jokes, and they're really not landing. <laughs> so, hopefully these North Buncombe players tomorrow at school, if they have iPads, can listen to the game and see, huh, I guess those jokes weren't good enough. I don't know. I like the attempt, though. Yeah. I guess in the MAC conference, they'd like to do that a lot because every team does that. Maybe it's expected. I don't know. Maybe. Who, uh, who has the uh, <laughs> the most humor, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A joke off or something. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Franklin at the plate. One out, runners on the corners. They get their leads. Hayes comes set. Big lead out there. And the dirt runs it full. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Malachi's really, really relying on his curveball late in the game here. Three-two pitch. Runner takes off at first. Foul back. Another hit and run. Great. It's a great time to put that on with a three-two count. A lot of times hit and runs are a really good thing to do with a hitter when the hitter's struggling because you're really putting the pressure on. I, I have to get the ball in play. I got to swing. But you can see that the runner's taking off and trying to make something happen here, squeeze another one over. Three balls, two strikes. Runner takes off again. High. Throw down to second. He's safe. Run comes home to score. I, it was ball four. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering because Will came came in front of the bag, not going to the bag, because he had a, when he caught it, he had to go back and reach. I don't know if he, I don't know if there was confusion there. So now we're. I think he's going to come in and pitch because it's like Will's going to short. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a pitching change. We'll wait to make sure. Looks like we will get also a courtesy runner coming in for the catcher for North Buncombe. Yep, we're going to get a pitching change for the Panthers. So we play on in the top half of the sixth inning. One out. And. A couple of runs have come home. It's five to three as we head to break. We'll tell you about the new pitcher right after this. My name is Tanner Jones. I'm a sophomore and I play golf. My grandpa influenced me and taught me how to play golf. My favorite golfer is Tiger Woods. That's it. Oh! <laughs> hey, 
out of here. <laughs> My favorite course so far that I've played on is Springdale Country Club. I would like to play college golf at Division II or higher, and I'd also like to move on to the Cord Ferry Tour. The Athlete of the Month has been presented by First Citizens Bank, helping families and businesses make more of their finances for over 125 years. First Citizens Bank, forever first, member FDIC. And by Corbin Dental, a locally owned dental practice providing comprehensive and advanced dental care in Franklin. They take pride in providing world-class care right here at home. Ian Nepp has come from his shortstop position for the Panthers to pitch now as Malachi Hayes will be out on the infield. Haven't exactly figured out where everybody's going to be. They'll shift around. We'll find out here very shortly. Top of the sixth inning, Malachi Hayes had pitched a whale of a ball game, given a couple of runs here, and he's given out of gas. And the pitching change was made by Coach Jerry Greenwood. Going to bring – Thomas Kirkpatrick to the plate with runners at first and second and one out. Kirkpatrick tonight, a couple of flyouts. He is 0 for 2 so far in the ball game. So Rowers goes over to short. Hayes is at second. That one almost hits him. Gets all the way to the backstop. And the runners will advance to second and third. Yeah, that's tough on your first pitch to, to have that happen. We've now got runners in scoring position and the tying runs at, at second base with only one out. And this guy took a big charge in his last at bat to left field to the warning track. Big hut that came up empty. Evens it up. We're starting to see roles defined now. I'm, I'm noticing Ian's coming in to you know start closing games. And I'm telling you, no matter how good a pitcher you are, you may have good stuff. But if you're not mentally tough, you can't handle the spot. But one thing about Ian Nepp is he's extremely mentally tough. He knows the game. He knows the situation. Uh, again, very athletic, good arm, good curveball. He's going to compete. And this is a good opportunity to him to kind of nail down this closer spot. Evidently, Kirkpatrick didn't like his batting help. Yeah, that's what causes people <laughs> not to hit the ball well is your batting helmet. I don't know. He hurled a couple into the dugout. They threw a couple out to him, and I guess he liked that one. He's ready to go now. One ball, one strike. Swings and misses. Home run cut, came up empty. Ball, two strikes now to Kirkpatrick. Well, it didn't change the trajectory of his uh, swing there, so I don't know. He's got that good slow pitch beer league softball swing now. That's good. <laughs> Maybe hit the circuits in a couple years. <laughs> Ball two strikes. High. Ball two. Ian does have a good curveball here. I wonder if it's a good time to throw it. Got a base open. Nobody hurt. Two balls, two strikes. Swung on and missed strike three. Ian Nepp. Comes in and fans Kirkpatrick. Two are gone. That's going to bring Kirk and Dahl to the plate. Number 15, Jacob Stowe. Nope, we're going to get a pinch hitter. This is going to be Stowe at the plate. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, two outs. Ian's getting the job done, the big strikeout. Jacob Stowe, first opportunity at the plate. Two on and two out. Curve. Caught the zone, strike one. Yeah, the thing about Ian's curve is more of a 12-6. He comes like way over the top on that. It feels playing deep except for Anderson. 0-1. Popped into the, end, the outfield, bowls, stops, falls down. Couldn't secure it. Two runs come home to score. We are tied at five. Throw around and eventually it ends up at third. 
And the pinch hitter will end up all the way down at third. Jacob Stowe. That's a tough break by, uh, for Ian. Made a good pitch, got the pop-up he needed, fly ball. Um, you know, maybe it's just one of the situations where you have Malachi running hard to chase that pop-up down. And then you have Damien coming in, and maybe maybe he's confused a little bit. Who's going to get the ball? Who got called off? Um, you know, that's a tough spot, too, for a freshman. You know, the game's on the line, 5-3. to three. You know, You're going to learn from your mistakes and grow on that. It's going to bring Dalton Anderson to the plate. Anderson was hit by a pitch and struck out. So now we are tied at five in the top of the sixth inning. And again, only two hits in the ball game so far for North Buncombe, but three walks in the inning. Anderson takes a strike. Good pitch. Again, all our pitchers tonight have been really working the zone. I mean, it's the only reason why we only have two hits given up. Anderson waits. Nice pitch. Yes, he, he did. He went around. 0-2. I'm a big fan of 0-2 counts, chasing curveballs. If, if you threw them the first two pitches, they really go way, way, away near the box for a fastball. See if he swings at it. You've seen so many ugly swings that way. 0-2. That one's in the dirt. And a nice stop by Rogers to keep the runner down at third. Ball two strikes now on Dalton Anderson. Boy, <clears throat> go ahead run down at third. Two are gone. Net deals a little bit high. Yeah. He it up. Two balls, two strikes, two are out. Up half of the sixth inning. Ian's going to battle here with two strikes. Right now his best pitch is his curveball. Nap comes set. Swung on and missed strike three. So Nap fans two via the K, but an error in the inning, three walks, and Four runs come across, and we are tied at five as we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and the Panthers and Blackhawks now knotted up at five apiece. Do have a new pitcher on the mound for the Blackhawks. Gray Reedy now is on the mound. He was the DH. But now he's going to be on the infield, coming in relief of Keenan. He pitched five complete innings. So, 
He will face nine, one, and two in the Panther order. Damian Bowles will lead it off. The sacrifice back in the fourth, reached on an air all the way back in the second inning. Damian takes a strike. That's what I was expecting here after seeing his warm-up pitches. Looks like a strike thrower with a good fastball. And uh, I think a lot of our hitters, hopefully they were paying attention to that and ready to jump all over it. The 0-1. Foul back. Quick in the hole 0-2 now is Damian Bowles. Good hack. Now he's got to change his approach with two strikes. We got to get runners on. The 0-2. Run chased. They're going to have to throw him out. Chase one in the dirt. And that's a strikeout for Bowles to begin the sixth inning. Top of the order we go, and Jaden Rogers. Rogers is due. He's 0 for 3. Here, ground outs at a fly out. That's the thing as a hitter. You know, you, you've seen fastballs, and you see something funny or a funny spin on it, just lay off it. Rogers, first time. At the plate against Reedy. We'll see if he has better luck now. Tom going to be called as the catcher, Davis Franklin. The pitcher, Grady Reedy, going to talk things over. Yeah, I think he's probably having a hard time seeing the signs here. The black and pinstripe uniform. Yeah. Probably is pretty tough. Rodgers sends it back to the screen, 0-1. So the first two hitters, he started off with a good hard fastball. And, uh, you know, knowing, you know, Ian's baseball IQ, he's probably got to think, okay, all right, so I'm going to be looking for a fastball down the middle first pitch, see if I can jump all over it. The 0-1. In the dirt, evens it up. Good eye by Jaden there, letting that ball go down low. I mean, Jaden's a middle-up middle hitter. Um, looking for his pitch here. Swings and misses, and it kicks away from the catcher. Ball two strikes now. He's on a good, good sharp slider there, and it's a nice pitch. Um, but obviously, I think he's trying to set his set the hitters up with this good live fastball. I mean, Reedy's throwing the ball very well right now. Here's a one-two pitch. Pop foul down the first baseline. It's like he may be throwing that wipeout slider here after that fastball, especially when he's ahead of the count one-two. Uh, he has not thrown over for a strike yet, so I don't know if I'll just lay off it. Reedy comes set. In the air, left field line, foul. There's battle brewing here between Rodgers and Reedy. So tough spot here, you know, for J for Jaden. I mean, he hasn't seen him throw that slider back-to-back uh, -back pitches yet. So in this situation, this circumstance, you get to really, really shorten up here and not try to take big hacks. Got to get a runner on, just one runner. Long look in for Reedy. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and missed. Got away from the catcher. Gonna have to throw him out, and they do. Route number two. Two are out for Ian Nepp now on the mound. I tell you what, it's a very confident North Buncombe team. I think they're ranked number one in the state, how confident they are. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. For the Got the pitcher dancing, bobbing his head. He's Number excited. Seven, Ian Nepp. Must be being scouted like Truett Manuel at Wes Henderson. Nepp tonight, single walk and a ground out. Sends that one towards second on a hop. Kirkendall will throw him out. 4-3 and 1-2-3 go the Panthers in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So we head to the seventh. We are tied at five here at McConnell Field. Stay with us.
Welcome back as we head to the top of the seventh inning. We are tied at five. Been a great ball game in this non-conference affair. Get back into the conference tomorrow. Here's the broadcast schedule. We'll have tomorrow's game here at McConnell Field on the network, YouTube, and Facebook. Smoky Mountain is the Battle of Cowie Mountain on the Diamond, 7 o'clock or maybe 7.30, like when we started tonight. Actually, about 7.40 we started tonight. Got a JV game before that one, so who knows when they'll start. And then a week from tonight, it's the Pisgah Black Bears here at McConnell Field. And a game that uh, was delayed because of rain from a couple of weeks back. Here's the schedule for the baseball team. And after those games, Coach Greenwood – packs his bags and uh, heads out on the road. Four consecutive road games for the Panthers at Smokey, at AC, at Brevard, and at West Henderson. Next home game after the eighth is against West Henderson, the defending 3A state champions. And then you travel to North Buncombe, you travel to Asheville, and travel to East Henderson. A lot of road games in the month of April. Taking his final warm-up tosses is Ian Knapp, uh, for the Panthers, and we'll get back to uh, some baseball here at McConnell Field. A uh, long intermission. Nine, one, and two in the North Buncombe battery. It's Dylan Silvers that'll lead it off. He's a victim of a strikeout twice so far in the ball game. He's over two. Nep's ready to go. Silvers strides to the plate. Silvers pops it foul back near us in the box. 0 and 1. I see where Anderson is on the grass here. Maybe we're looking for a bunt. The 0 1. Fouled off. Okay. We'll see him back up a little bit, maybe even with, even with the bag, probably where he's comfortable at. Regan Smith and Brady Ray on deck. The 0-2 pitch. He showed a good curveball. We'll see if he's got it right here. Okay. A little high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Nep comes set, delivers. He chased it out of the zone. Did Silvers for out number one. Top of the order we go now, and Regan Smith. That's three strikeouts for Silvers in the game. Yeah, by the look at that swing, he just looks very uncomfortable tonight. Regan Smith doubled to lead off the sixth inning, that five run. I mean, uh, sixth inning. And uh, that one is in the dirt for ball one. You're staying locked in. I like this. 1 0. Popped back behind the seats. Strike one. There's the cowbell again. Kind more falling, cowbell. Falling asleep for a while. He's more, back. Yeah, more cowbell. <laughs> Need Will Farrell. Jimmy right. Fallon laughing. Yeah, we, we are not at Mississippi State tonight. <laughs> You'd expect that. <laughs> Mississippi State. One ball, one strike. That one catches the zone. All two strikes. Leadoff hitter, Regan Smith. Good. High and tight. Yeah, you could tell what Jaden Rogers wanted. He's kind of crouched up. He was kind of he's I want this ball right here up around the letters. So now we're looking at eye level. I'd like to see him work away here with the curveball. See if he can set up outside. Yep, he's outside here. Two two. No. I wanted him to chase that high heat. He didn't. Runs it full three and two. I mean, it's a good idea because usually he follows up with the curve on that pitch, but maybe it comes right now. 3-2. There's 
the curve, hit into right field. Raby on his horse, dives, makes the play. Two gone. He has really settled out there in right field. He has made some really great catches. I mean, again, I told you, right field here is it's like a death valley, and it doesn't phase Reed Raby. He's doing a good job out there. Number 24, Brady Ray. So we'll see Brady Ray stroll, stroll to the plate. He is 0 for 3. Walk, a couple of flyouts. And he takes high for ball one. I love this role for Ian. I mean, it's it's a boon for us. It's a, it's a great, great opportunity to kind of nail this down. The one zero offering. Good pitch. Bounces up. Two and zero. If you're wondering about the bottom of the seventh inning, middle part of the order, three, four, and five for the Panthers do up. Two-zero pitch, pops foul down the first baseline. That'll reach the grandstand down mm -hmm. the first baseline. He's showing a good fastball, and I like to see that. Hitters aren't really catching up to it. The two-one is swung on and fouled off at the plate. This is the spot I used to love doing this with our pitchers, doing shake-offs, shake-offs, uh, just kind of really delaying it, making a hitter call time, get back in the box, shake-off, shake-off, all of a sudden act like you're confused, come out there. Deuce hit. is wild, two balls, two strikes, two are out. Ray waits. Nap deals. Nice pitch. Ah, just away. missed. A little outside and low, three and two. Surprised the hitter didn't chase that. That's okay. He's thrown three or two curveballs before. Nice pitch. A little low, ball four. That's a base on ball for Ray, and that'll bring Gray Reedy to the plate. Second walk for Ray in the ball game. Drew one back in the fourth inning. A time called may get oh, we're going to get a, a mound visit here. Uh, I don't know if he's going to pull him there. Ian's throwing well. I wonder if he's going to talk about this hitter. <clears throat> you know, I'm sure you know, usually when you're in the dugout or you're a pitching coach or you have one of your, one of your pitchers who are not playing kind of do charts and maybe he's trying to figure out you know where he likes it what pitch, where you want to, where you don't want to throw to. Just some advice. Yep. And we'll get back to action. Probably, uh, probably a little scouting report on the runner here, what to expect. Probably telling him, you know, just vary your looks. Don't just, you know, take the ball and go home. You know, make sure you keep that runner here. You don't want to get the runner a head start. That's the big thing right now because the ball in the gap is going to score him. Now he's got a big – he's got a really big lead out there. Reedy at the plate. He takes low and outside in the dirt. Rogers able to secure that one, keep the runner at first. 1-0 the count. Reedy is 0 for 3. He did draw a walk back in the sixth inning. Yeah, you got a really good runner on first base. Very agitating. Runner takes off at first. It was a hit and run. And a foul at the plate. Ball and a strike now to Reedy. You know, Ian's got a lot of control tonight. And this is where a good opportunity to, like, really frustrate the hitter and frustrate the runner by just kind of delaying the game a little bit, throwing over about three or four times in a row. You know, that last game he pitched in, he threw it like ten times in a row over there. People were booing, and he liked that. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Runner stays put. Down the hole. The ball, two strikes as Reedy. It's probably a good time that uh, North Bunton coach is going to send the runner here. Probably expecting a curveball. Two are out. Runner at first, now throw over. Yep, good idea. 
sometimes you also do that slow move, slow feet, slow, slow arm, quick feet, slow arm. You go quick feet, quick arm. One, two, runner takes off, curve, hit into right field. Raby camps under it, makes the play for the final out. Reed Raby flashing some leather in right field. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Middle part of the Panther order due up in a tie game. Stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Middle part of the order for the Panthers due up. Gray Reedy remains on the mound for the Blackhawks as he came in relief the previous inning. Malachi Hayes, Jackson Hersey, and Will Rowers. Three, four, and five. And the Panther order due up. Hit a tie game. Bottom of the seventh inning. George, let's see back-to-back -back doubles and go home tonight. I'm not going to argue that. Malachi Hayes takes high for ball one. Well, that's a good fastball. It's about an 82. I can see why the pitcher gets excited. Hayes tonight. Ball. <laughs> ball and zero strike. A little high. 2-0, uh, Malachi Hayes tonight is uh, one for three. Reached on an air, singled, and walked. He did reach and played a run back in the fifth inning. Here's a 2-0. To the screen it goes, as he got a piece of it. Two and one. Hitter's got to really go up to the plate and really hunt those fastballs on the white because he's going to bring you a fastball that's about 81-82 which is a good average high school fastball. You can get away with it with wins. But um, but our guys, you know, let him supply that power I guess he may have and, you know, let our barrels just do the talking a little bit. Here's a 2-1. Oh, high. 3-1. and one. He Worked a walk his last plate appearance. Did Malachi. Yeah, here comes another fastball. Malachi just hit barrel it right in front of him. Ball four. Cut. Here's your base runner. It's what we need. Um, now Reed's showing good control. He's, you know, he's just missing a little bit around the zone. Uh, yeah. Again, you're hoping for a wild pitch, but you can't just expect it. But Malachi has to get a good primary lead and really good secondary off the pitch to see if the ball's on the ground or not and really get to second base and get the scoring position. Jackson needs to come into the play here. Just, again, that right side's going to be wide open. They're going to shade the, sh uh, the second baseman over a little bit. You can see it to the right side with the, with the first baseman holding the runner on. 
that he really needs to just, again, attack that scoreboard with the ball. You saw Coach Greenwood give Hersey a pep talk. Hersey squares, runner takes off, throw down, bang, bang. He's safe. Come on. North Buncombe fans thought he was out. Pitch at the plate was a strike. So now a hit to the outfield could win the ball game. Yeah, I will still try to put this bunt down if I can. Now time going to be called. Yeah. So the, umpa the home plate umpire is really tired hearing his dugout just scream all night long and, and just, I don't know. He gave him the warning. Yeah. He saw his finger. Say, that's your first warning. Yeah, but I guess that's what the MAC conference does because every team does that, and I guess they're just trying to be like each other. It's kind of weird, but that's okay. But, again, putting the bunt down to the right side will be a great idea if we can. Here's the 0-1. Percy oh. sends it into left field, and it's caught by the left fielder in our blind spot, Dalton Anderson, able to – Secure that one for out number one. Yeah, he put a charge in that one. Had a lot of top spin on it. Uh, the right, the left fielder took about three or four steps to his uh, right. 11, made the play. That'll bring Will Rowers to the plate. Victim of a strikeout a couple of times. He did have a sack fly back in the fifth inning. Rowers bats with the runner at second and one out. I'd like to see a freshman become a hero right now. Look at second. That was pounded into the dirt, or was it a foul ball? They're going to say it was a foul ball. No! Off his leg. They're going to bring Rowers back. The thing with Will is he's a very strong kid, and I, I don't, the idea of him maybe just over swinging it, just trying to kill the ball to the next state. I just think he needs to let the pitcher supply the power and just get the barrel on it. Just stay really inside the ball. All you need is a hit to the outfield. You're going to score Malachi in a base hit somewhere. He's scoring. Reedy, uh, Reedy steps off the rubber now. I mean, all the outfielders are playing straight away. None of them are really shot, uh, shot shallow. Maybe the right fielder slightly. I mean, you have a hole to the left side. I think there were there was a question about the count. I believe that the umpire and the yeah. pitcher Reedy were discussing. It's the 0-1. Rowers goes golfing, came yeah. up empty. Franklin able to secure that one behind the plate to keep the runner at second. Got a Reese throwing a good slider here. It's tough because it's kind of a wipeout slider. Comes hard. That's the thing about sliders. You know, you know, pitchers like to throw it because it looks like a fastball, but it has a really late break tilt to it. Reedy comes set. The 0-2. Sends it foul. Rowers, third baseline. Stays alive. I mean, Will has a lot of speed. I just wish he could put it in his brain right now, just get the ball in play. Because he'll put a lot of pressure on that, on that defense. The 0-2. It's low for ball one. All right, so you just saw a fastball, 0-2 count, 1-2. He knows that he's got – he had Will Chase on a slider before. I think Will's got to be very careful here and really recognize that pitch because he has not thrown that slider for a strike. One ball, two strikes, runner at second. Fouled off. Rowers in quite a battle with Reedy. So we approach 10 o'clock. Seen a lot of good traits out of Will here. Yep. You know, facing a, facing a, a solid high school fastball and a good slider here, you know, making connections. He's coming quickly. The one, two. 
That's what we need. On the infield, high chop. Going to be fielded by the second baseman. Bang, bang. Got him. Kirkendall able to field it on a high hop. Rose to Kirkpatrick. 4-3. Goes Rowers. Two are gone. Does okay. move the runner over third. They just got Will. That's what I was talking about. Just put the ball in play and use your athleticism and your speed. Man, it was so close. It could have gone both ways. That's going to bring Reed Raby to the plate, the right fielder. And Raby is 0 for 3. Did draw a walk his last plate appearance. Here, flyouts. Yep. I mean, Reed's hit the ball hard in his two outs. And, and here's the thing. We love to see a senior kind of really jumpstart this team with a win right now going into tomorrow night. We'd love for a senior to get it done right here. A little high for ball one. Yeah. I think that was a curveball or a slider that kind of backed up on him, left it up. Reed's got to really see a fastball right here. He's got to jump all over this fastball that's coming. The 1-0. Inside corner, nice pitch. Ball one strike to Reed Raby. There you go. One one is high. Two and one. Man, that third baseman's back and you get the pitcher falling off to the first base high to base hit bump be nice. A lot of space over there. Uh, Pounds it into the ground. Foul at the plate. Evens it up. I tell you, this is where small ball wins ball games. You know, you don't have that third baseman. You can't do it now with two strikes, obviously. But, you know, with the third baseman, not even even at the bag, he's behind the bag. You don't even see him on the grass. you got to take that chance. Two balls, two strikes, two out. In the air, going to be caught on a hop to first. Got him. Raby Dove to try to beat the throw. 6-3 goes Reed Raby and the Panthers in the seventh. We go to the eighth, tied at five apiece. Stay with us. My name is Tanner Jones. I'm a sophomore and I play golf. My grandpa influenced me and taught me how to play golf. My favorite golfer is Tiger Woods. Miss it. Oh! <laughs> hey, he's out of here. <laughs> My favorite course so far that I've played on is Springdale Country Club. I would like to play college golf at Division II or higher, and I'd also like to move on to the Cord Ferry Tour. The Athlete of the Month has been presented by First Citizens Bank, helping families and businesses make more of their finances for over 125 years. First Citizens Bank, Forever First, member FDIC. And by Corbin Dental, a locally owned dental practice providing comprehensive and advanced dental care in Franklin. They take pride in providing world-class care right here at home. Welcome back. We head to the top of the eighth inning. Tied at five apiece. It's going to be the middle part of the North Boncombe order due up. Four, five, and six. Cameron Keenan, who began on the mound, will bat to lead things off. And he'll take high for ball one. Glad that you're sticking with us as we are past the 10 o'clock hour, 10.03, on YouTube and Facebook on Franklin Panther Sports Network. I'm George Young alongside Ryan Haley as Keenan takes a strike on the low inside or outside corner. Evens it up, add a ball, and a strike. Philip Angel, our executive producer tonight. In the break, Philip fired up some coffee over here to keep us awake. That one's to the screen. Ball, two strikes. Yeah, I need a pot right now. But. 
Yeah. It is spring break, so you don't have to get up early tomorrow and be at school. It's true. It's true. One two pitch. pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Very nice. Very nice to get the first out, the first hitter. Uh, especially when you're down at the bottom of the order. It's going to bring Davis Franklin to the plate. Franklin tonight. Sack fly. Ground out in the walk. Nap deals. A strike. You just joined us, Ian Nap came in relief of Malachi Hayes. He pitched a great game. Gave out a gas, though, in the sixth inning. 0-1. Oh, Fouled off. Right side. And a whole 0-2 now. Yeah, Ian's being a good strike thrower right now. Protect, kid, you know, the right. best part about that is you keep your defense on their heels. Or on their toes, sorry, on their toes. Expecting a ground ball or a fly ball. 0-2. Oh, yeah. In the air, left field. Sutton plants himself under it. And he'll make the play in our dead spot there. Out number two. Yep. That's all you ask out of your pitcher. No free passes. Put the ball in play. Let your defense work. Brings Thomas Kirkpatrick to the plate. Kirkpatrick tonight. He is 0 for 3. Kirkpatrick sends it foul. Back behind us. And judging by the amount of fans that are still in the stands, a lot of them have decided that sleep is better. They have head to the exits right behind home plate in the yeah. shot. But a lot of folks, you can tell on our mic, a lot of folks still here, like a lot of noise. Extra innings, you know, you got free baseball and yeah. you're taking off. Kirkpatrick waits the 0-1. Oh, Bow back. Well, he does have the white helmet on, so he's staying with it this time. He's not going so, to the yeah. – uh, Yeah, I don't know why he decided that he wanted to change helmets his last plate appearance. I don't know. They don't have many colors in their uh, garb, so I'm not sure if there's another helmet color. L2. High. All two strikes now to Thomas Kirkpatrick. The one-two from Nep. Misses. Yeah. Gave that release point out front. He really had that one up high. Kind of telegraphed that just a little bit. He just has to be really aggressive. Same arm action like his fastball. Just throw it hard. Two Have balls, confidence. Two strikes. Two are out. Here it is. Goes through the legs. Rogers to the backstop. Runs it full three and two. That was a good pitch. I just think game was a little bit frustrated. Didn't kind of snare that out front. See if he can freeze that pitch for a strike. Ball four. He may have a courtesy or pinch runner for the – for the runner now at first base. Kind of get some wheels on there. And it's like that's what the uh, coach is going to do. Possibly. Yeah, he's going to do that. Third three is coming out there. We'll get a courtesy runner. I think that was the guy who's been screaming all night long, making funny jokes, but I guess he gets to play now. That's Ryan Moffat. He's been out there before. Okay. Was a, a courtesy runner. Before now, we're going to get a uh, meeting on the mound. Oh, Again, he's probably going over to scout and report what this hitter's done tonight, uh, maybe what the runner has done tonight, since he was a courtesy runner earlier in the game. Uh, understanding the situation here with two outs. You know, this is why we have hitting charts. We want to find out, you know, what pitches they're spraying the ball off and, you know, if they're hitting the right field, left field, you know, what they're chasing. Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity. Coach Taylor's doing the right thing to go out there and discuss this. So when the meeting is over, 
Hello. Zach Kirkendall will stroll to the plate. Reached on an air, flied out, and struck out. He's 0 for 3. Top of the eighth inning. He just joined us. The Panthers had a 5 to 1 lead heading into the sixth inning. North Buncombe able to plate four in that inning. Tie it up. Yeah, that runner's jumping way out there past the cut. Trying to apply pressure, maybe uh, getting Ian's head a little bit. Check that's going to be Jacob Stowe. That will bat now. And Kirkendall, he came in to yeah. bat for him previously in a state in the lineup. That's what I love to see. So we got Ian, you know, coming set. Going to start frustrating the runner and the hitter here. Low. Good opportunity to, to uh, implement a little slide step or a quick pitch here. Uh, trying to keep, again, you know, to keep that runner from not advancing or taking off and have a hitter hit one in the gap is, is devastating. Throw over and back safely is Moffitt over its, at first. Moffitt's got good wheels. Here's the 1-0. Hit and run to perfection. They're going to throw down to third. They will send the runner. There we go. It's high. The throw is at the plate. Out. And that will end the inning. I'm not sure if the runner was sent or he just sent himself. He sent himself because the third base coach is extremely angry at him. He ran through the stop sign. Tied at five, we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Stay with us. Chris Rummins Construction is a family-owned, licensed building contractor servicing the Franklin Highlands and Cashers area, specializing in custom home construction, remodels and additions, as well as custom trim and closet cabinetry. Start your project today with Chris Rummins Construction. In open space, Hanley at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Davis hits one into right pretty well. Right fielder backpedaling. It's out of here. Maddox Sutton leads things off at the bottom of the eighth inning for the Panthers. As Gray Reedy remains on the hill, he gets set to deal the first offering. Now time called at the plate. I love it. Well, Sutton tonight reached out an air, grounded out and single. Sutton takes a strike. Yeah, again, uh, Addix is a guy who wants to see the ball middle in. He doesn't want to really extend his arms out, trying to chase an away pitch here. The 0 1. Popped straight up the chute in foul territory. The catcher has a beat on it. And he'll make the play. Davis Franklin. Able to secure it in foul territory for the first down. One gone, brings Anderson Terrell to the plate. Now batting for the Panthers, number one, Anderson Terrell. So Anderson tonight has a couple of singles and a ground out. He's two for three. Now time called, it was not given and <laughs> Terrell takes low for ball one. 
probably trying to get in the pitcher's head a little bit. Here's the 1-0. Mm. Four strike, evens it up. Kind of watching uh, Anderson's stance and his approach. It kind of looks like his brother Andrew when I kind of watched him a lot, uh, you know, on ESPN playing for Appalachian State. Just really relaxed. The one, two. Backed him off at the curve. It caught the inside corner for strike two. One, two. Got to watch out for the wipeout sliders. Got to be very careful here. Be smart. Got a piece of it. Did Terrell foul it off down the first baseline into the right field area in front of the grandstand. Stays a ball, two strikes to Anderson Terrell. Damian Bowles on deck. Well, fans will be back at it again tomorrow, well, almost 24 hours from right now, less than 24 hours. We'll be back at it right here at McConnell Field. Ball, two strikes. Pop foul, stays alive, just Terrell. He's doing a good job here. He's really battling this pitcher. Smoky Mountain Mustangs come to McConnell Field, Battle of Cowie Mountain. On the diamond here. I'm not sure how often he's seen uh, this kind of velocity in travel baseball, but he's hanging well now. One, two. Fouls it off. Look out. Yeah, that's why we have fences there. Um, <laughs> that one went right into the Panthers dugout. I think decapitation was part of the uh, reasons why that's going up. Yeah. So. And they have a hole in the fence over there. Probably. I'll tell, you who, I'll tell you who wasn't scared was Kelsey Averett. <laughs> not scared. One, two. In, fouls it off, pokes it. it out. Doing a great job by a freshman here, battling, battling, battling. You know, he's making really good connection off that slider. Uh, so maybe if he catches the fastball here, he can get that barrel out front, really do some damage. Because he can. he's a guy with good wheels and get the third real fast. One, two pitch, once again. High, evens it up. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom of the eighth, we play. Knotted at five apiece. Look like at back, look like a off-speed pitch that backed up on him. He's gonna try and blow him away right here. Two, two. Missed. Runs it full, three and two. That was a tough pitch to take. I know. It's crazy. Pitcher's not happy about it. He's walking off. Taking a deep breath. In the air, right field. It looks like Tessner will make the play. He will for the second out. It's a good at bat by Anderson Terrell. Did a lot of bowling in there. We'll bring Damian Bowles to the plate. Bowles reached on an air as a sacrifice and struck out. I can't knock to see him base hit bun here. Little, little drag bunt. That third baseman's back. Bowles takes a strike. It's a lost start. They've done it for decades for a reason, because it works. Reedy deals outside, leaves it up. You need to start his load early. Try to get that foot down, get that barrel out pretty quick. 1-1. One, one. A little bit low, four ball, two. He needs to see a fastball right here. He just needs to jump all over it, expect it, track it. Gray Reedy deals high. Mm -hmm. Ball three. And as we say in the coaching circles, 3-1 count. You only hit your perfect pitch. It's got to be your perfect pitch. Anything else, lay off. Go to first base. 
Get to the leadoff hitter. Swing. Oh, sw oh, I thought it was uh, yeah. strike three. Yeah, One we, on and missed, and they threw it down to third. We, we play three strikes in this league. <laughs> I don't know what they do in the MAC. I know they scream like weirdos and stuff like that, and I don't know. You're making a lot of fans <laughs> the MAC tonight, right? <laughs> it's okay. They're cool. <laughs> we got a state champion in our conference, so we're good. <laughs> three balls, two strikes. Ball there four. That'll bring the top of the order, Jaden Rogers, to the plate. Jaden Rogers tonight, to say that he's due is an understatement. A couple of strikeouts and a couple of ground outs. He's 0 for 4. Yeah. Runner at first. Again, that right side's wide open, and we just were, were pulling way too much, pulling our shoulder out way too much. Rogers sends it. Oh into left center field. Who's going to call off? Who looks like it's going to be the center fielder? Dylan Silvers and will make the play for the final out. So, fans, we continue. Into the ninth we go, tied at five. Stay with us. Welcome back. We head to the ninth inning, tied at five apiece here at McConnell Field. Nepp and Rogers, your pitcher to catcher, were in the dugout for a long time. In fact, he just got out there on the mound, so he's going to take a couple of more warm-up pitches. Talked about the conference clash tomorrow. Smoky Mountain comes to call him, and it's Franklin and Smoky Mountain battling for the bottom of the conference. These are the Mountain 7 conference standings, both – have yet to get a conference win, so somebody tomorrow will get a conference win and improve their stock in the Mountain 7 Conference. That's tomorrow. That's a 7 o'clock or so start here at McConnell Field because there is a JV game, just like tonight. We didn't start till almost 7.45. They let them play since it's spring break, and you don't have to get up in the morning and go to school. Up to bat is number 8, Dalton Anderson. The Bottom of the order is due up here for North Buckham as uh, Dalton Anderson will stride to the plate. Eight, nine, and then we'll head to the top of the order in one. Pitch. First offering in for a strike. Top of the ninth at McConnell Field as we uh, head past 10-22. Pop down the right field line, and it's going to reach the seats. Quickly, the hole 0 2 is Anderson. Again, Ian Nets being a strike thrower. Keeping his infield ready to go. Getting, getting fly balls, getting ground balls. That's all we can ask for out of Ian. He's doing a great job tonight. Giving us a chance. I mean, we're in the ninth now. We're playing like Major League Baseball. Here we go. Six, 
Silvers on deck. He is 0 for 3. Good pitch. Oh, that just missed. Yeah, it's been a strike tonight, too, for quite a few pitches. All two strikes now on Anderson. I know both pitchers on both sides have been upset by the, by the zone. One, two. Fouled off. Just got a piece of it. Time going to be called at the plate. And given to Anderson, he pops out quickly. Head back in. Nep comes set. A one, two. The pitch, got him. Called strike three. One gone, brings Silvers to the plate. As previously mentioned, he's 0 for 3, all strikeouts. Silvers strides up to the right-handed batter's box. Yeah, this is a very important batter because you're going to the leadoff hitter. He's, he's done a lot of damage tonight. Yep, double. And that one's in the dirt. Ball one to Silvers. He's the most important hitter. So, again, continue to attack the zone with a fastball. Get the pop up. 1-0 and four strike. One one foul back to the screen. Ball two strikes now on Silvers. So again, you know, I say it over and over again. A lot of times, a curveball can speed up a, a maybe a weaker hitter's uh, bat. You know, changing the eye level of a, of a really good fastball could be a really good key spot here. Here's the one two. Chased. They'll have to throw him out, and they do. That's the fourth strikeout for Silvers. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Nepp. Top of the order we go, man, Reagan Smith. Did you say four strikeouts for Silvers? Yep. Ooh. Number 13, Reagan Smith. Yep, yep, yep. Every plate appearance, he has struck out. All right, here we go. Very important batter. I mean, one thing we don't want to happen is a uh, an extra base hit here. So, guarding the line, I see Anderson doing that. He's so smart. So what we call this is we call this, you know, let's play no doubles. So you kind of want your – I mean, I get your right fielder, but this guy's been pulling all night, so you want Anderson playing close to the line deep. The 1-0. Popped on the infield. Hayes going to call off everybody, and Malachi Hayes makes the play for the final out. One, two, three. Go to the North Buncombe Blackhawks. They're half of the ninth inning. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Tied at five. Stay with us, Faith. My name is Tanner Jones. I'm a sophomore, and I play golf. My grandpa influenced me and taught me how to play golf. My favorite golfer is Tiger Woods. That's it. Oh! <laughs> hey, he's out of here. <laughs> My favorite course so far that I've played on is Springdale Country Club. I would like to play college golf at Division II or higher, and I'd also like to move on to the Corn Ferry Tour. The Athlete of the Month has been presented by First Citizens Bank, helping families and businesses make more of their finances for over 125 years. First Citizens Bank, forever first, member FDIC. And by Corbin Dental, a locally owned dental practice providing comprehensive and advanced dental care in Franklin. They take pride in providing world-class care right here at home. 
Welcome back. Bottom of the ninth we go. Ian Nett leads it off for the Panthers. Reedy deals a strike. As Gray Reedy remains on the bump for North Buckup and Coach Charlie Harris. Let's see his MO. Let's take that first pitch, see what he's got. In the air, center field, and going to drop. At least a double he's going to stop there as Ian Nepp doubles <laughs> to lead off the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, Ian kind of gave a little gesture back to North Buncombe with his double there, kind of like the uh, the bird yeah. swan thing. So Ian's not really a talker, but he's going to show you that he hears things and yeah. he got his. So right now, let's end the game. Uh, Malachi here's our best hitter. He's going to put him on, I think, because he doesn't matter. All right. So for all you fans out there, again, Ian's the winning run. So – Obviously, you know, everybody knows about Malachi Hayes and how good of a hitter he is. His run does not matter. But I know last time uh, Greeny tried to put Jackson on or try to sacrifice with him. Well, Jackson Hersey comes to the plate. This is his fifth plate appearance. He's 0 for 4. A couple of strikeouts, a ground down and a fly out. See the first baseman really coming up close. I don't get this one. He is squaring and bunting it foul is Hersey. Strike one. Try to remove the runner over. Okay. Jackson Hersey. Squares. Oh, shoot. First baseman charges. That is, uh, it's that scary. Is close. Because in the days of using the slash where you pull back and swing, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that is scary. That will kill somebody. So I don't know. With aluminum bat, absolutely. And you got to think with a four hitter, that's a possibility. Yeah. That's a good bunt. That's a good bunt. Going to be a tough play. Hersey on his horse. Safe. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Infield single. For Hersey, and that's going to bring to the plate Will Rowers. So here we go. You got wheels all in the base pass. You got Will, who's probably one of the best athletes around. Now we're going to have a meeting on the mound. So what probably what North Buckman's going to have to do, they're going to have to play and field in. That means third baseman, shortstop, second and first is going to play grass. Um, if they – if they notice hands moving up the bat towards the tape, then you're going to see crash by the uh, pie by the corners. So I'm sure Harris, Coach Harris, is probably going over the situation here of what to see, uh, what each role of the infielders is going to have to be. They're going to have to be really tight. But again, they're all going to be infield in. They're going to have to be because that's the winning run at third base. And then um, you may see the second baseman kind of probably cheating towards first. You're going to see the shortstop. Most likely just being in normal position. You're going to see the outfield going to be playing shallow. I already see the right fielder playing seven, playing shallow. Uh, center field is pretty much straight away. Left field is playing shallow. So the first baseman is, is in a crash mode. It fills in. Well, here we go. At the plate, it's Will Rowers. The bases are loaded. Swings and misses at the first offering. Does Rowers to the whole 0 and 1. I think any fly ball is going to be a winning run. So Will's just got to really just choke up and just poke. He's just got to get the ball. I mean, a little dinker's going to score him anyway because they're so far in. The 0 1 chased it out of the zone, and the catcher, Franklin, able to secure it. Nobody advances. And the whole 0 and 2 now is Rowers. Yeah, Will's putting a little too much pressure on himself just trying to get the job done here, but he's just got to relax and just play the game of baseball and just barrel it up a little bit. But now with two strikes, he's got to expect a lot. He's got to really shorten his swing down and just make contact. A lot of speed behind him coming up in the lineup too. 
Here's the 0-2. Greedy, a long look in. Now time called by Rowers at the plate. You can hear a pin drop in the stadium. Everybody yeah. got quiet. The cowbell's not ringing anymore. Cowbell's not ringing. North Buncombe's dugout's really quiet. Or maybe folks have fallen asleep. I don't know. We're heading Good. past 1030 now. <laughs> 0-2 the count on Will Rowers. Comes into this plate appearance 0 for 4. That's the other thing. The, the run of third base can take a bigger lead down the line because he's on the grass. Rowers got a piece of it. Stays alive 0-2. You know, when I say short and swing, I mean, I'm talking about really short to swing. You're just really just trying to guide the barrel out there. I mean, this pitcher throws just hard enough just to give you a little power. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Misses. Ball one. No, Bunkin fans don't like that pitch. That's a close call. I mean, yeah. You know, most places that is a strike, and I get that. The th see, the thing with Will there, that's too close to take. you got to expand your zone top to bottom. Ball two strikes. Nobody out, base is loaded. Ow. Hit his foot and fouled it off. Will's battling up there really well. He's doing a good job. He's just got to really just cut his swing down. It's hard, and I get that. And when you become more of a veteran player, uh, you start understanding these things. One, two. Again, a nice snag by Franklin to keep it in front of him. And it keeps the runners at bay. Two balls, two strikes to Rower. Here's the best part. Of all the players on our team at third base, I'm glad it's Ian Knapp. Not trying to take away from somebody like Malachi because he's the same way, but Ian over here at third base gives me at ease because he's going to make smart decisions. Percy at first, Hayes at second, Knapp at third. He's the only run that counts. 2-2. Two -two. Ball three. Pressure's on. Pressure's on the batter and the pitcher. More for the pitcher because he can end the game. We got two more opportunities. Three-two pitch. Ball four. Ball game. Wow. I believe in karma, George. I believe in karma. You played That's the game. It. You played the game the right way. Good results happen. It's a final. In nine innings tonight, the winning run walked in after Rowers able to battle, 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 and earn a walk with the bases loaded. There were two walks in the inning with a single and a double, and the Panthers win this one six to five in this non-conference affair. And they push their overall record now to three and seven. And the North Buncombe Blackhawks drop to four and seven overall. And we will be right back here in less than 24 hours from right now as the Panthers will host the Mustangs of Smoky Mountain in the Battle of Cowie Mountain. This one turned out to be epic, Ryan. <laughs> mm. You know, this is really good for our team. You know, again, you have a team from the MAC Conference, and they're pretty good top to bottom. Uh, it's very good competition, and you can tell. They're, you know, their schedules are tough, and, and, uh, and we needed this. N number one, you know, kind of break the streak, get a good feeling win again. But number two is, you know, the opponent's, opponent's winning percentage when it comes to the playoffs plays in huge for us. So big win for us. Uh, tomorrow night's going to be another big game to really, really turn the season around and move forward. All right, that's going to wrap it up. My thanks to Philip Angel, our executive producer, for Ryan Haley. Until tomorrow night, I'm George Young. So long, everybody.